God. Yeah, yeah. So, welcome, welcome, my friends. Now, let's talk about this, guys. We are now doing real talk stream. Right now, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but DeRoy Gaming has been roasting the game hard. Okay? He's been going crazy. He's been going out intense on the game. He's been getting in the mix, going psycho on everyone, right? Now, today will be a real talk stream. You finally quitting? Not right now, but hey. All right, well, it, we have arrived at the DeRoya real talk stream, so I guess we might as well just get right into it then, because this is going to be some a real talk situation, guys, uh, with DeRoya. So, guys, welcome to the actual, the, the main event, like the uh, the, the real uh, debate, the debate. We have DeRoya here. Uh, you know, I, I did actually, t you know, I was I was half joking that we should have like a hard debate um, yesterday on the stream, but actually, you know, I thought, fuck it, let's actually go, you know what, let's actually go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do it. And so here we are, talk to Dora, we got that shit set up, we're going to talk a little bit about the game, state of the game, that sort of thing, and, and some of his thoughts, I, you know, uh, I, I've seen like the interesting transformation, the uh, the metamorphosis of Daroya recently. Um, <laughs> And the, you know, in a relatively short period of time, like it, it, you know, he's gone from like, the most PMA guy ever, okay, to maybe a little less so. And I, you know what, I gotta pick this man's brain. You know, I absolutely have to. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So, Deroya, what's the uh, what's the deal then? What's the situation here? Like, what what has caused you to become a little bit um, disenfranchised with with Guild Wars Two? What's what's gone wrong? Uh, I, I, I mean. In a lot of ways, I think you you kind of hyped it up to be more than it is. Not gonna lie. Um, I mean, uh, I'm not. I, I guess in a lot of ways, I've just gone through well, a bit of a a bit of a phase of, or I'm still going through a bit of a phase of like acclimating to the new situation. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I think the reality of the situation is I I feel like. Um, I feel like this has been a bit of a like all of my all of my positivity and fighting for the game and 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 a lot of a lot of all that. I, I I don't. I'm not going back on anything I've ever said about the game and the the state of the game. It's still a great game. Like should you play? Should you go the route of Jaw and play the game, so to speak, and 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 shield it out? Yeah, sure. It, it's a great fucking game. Wait, wait, wait. wait what? I, <laughs> what? I mean, what? I'm I'm not blaming Jaw here, but like, it, it, like watching watching a video like his like yesterday or whatever when he when he put it up, it's like it, it it's it's eye opening in a lot of ways, but also like, I don't know, it's kind of weird because I see exactly the points that he's making. Like, yeah, the great the game is great. The game has all of these great amazing uh, features. I don't disagree whatsoever. It's a it's a fucking great game. It's just that. I feel like in a lot of ways, I've I've been confronted with um, I, I guess we can call it the, the the reality of the situation, like tr truly been been confronted with the reality of the situation. Um, I feel like it's been a bit of a Sisyphean task, right? Where I've really enjoyed pushing this boulder up the hill, but one day someone someone just kind of takes my hand and walks me over to the side of the the cliff and shows me what i'm doing every day and i see the hill for what it is and i see the boulder for what it is and the question is do i still continue like because i still like it i still like pushing this boulder up the hill every single day but now i just know that well there's a finitity to it there's a there's a reality of uh a finiteness to to the game and the and the future of the game like were they are are they uh, at ArenaNet working on some uh, something else despite all the cancellations? Probably. Does Guild Wars 2 have somewhere between three and six years, seven years left of development? Yeah, probably. Um, it's gonna live on for a long time. The question is just like, can I can I be content with the finitity of it? And I, I don't know if I can. I, I've said for the longest time, this is why I gave the, like, the last time, the last tea time, I gave the analogy of, like, the relationship and whatnot. Like, I feel like I should be happy despite being being told that, that yeah, uh, all of the other relationships were dropped. I feel like at this point, it's like, I've said for years that if GW3 was ever announced to be in production, I'd quit Guild Wars 2 instantaneously. Turns out, 
it's very likely that that was in in uh, in development. Like, were they working on GW three? Probably. Were they working on GW three uh, two mobile? Probably. Were they working on two uh, one or two other titles as well, just as R and D? Probably. And I, I think I was just con kind of confronted with that reality of like, there is there is an end. There, it's not it's not infinitely going to be a great developing. <laughs> Uh, ideal situation for the do, game. Do you mean that the scope of the game is limited? Is that is that what you, what you mean? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I understand. You know, I, I honestly, um, it, it's crazy how much I find my my thoughts mirroring yours. I think you've actually expressed exactly um, how 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 I feel and my inherent frustration. Like it, it, it's 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 bizarre. Actually, I think we're in such a weirdly similar situation mentally regarding Guild Wars Two. Actually, it's it's uncanny. Actually. Um, uh, yeah, it's, the, the problem is not that the game is bad, right? It's the, exactly. it's the, it, it's not at all, like, the game is not bad. It's more the fact that, you know, you, you really try and push for the game and you push for improvements, and then you realize that there's just no way it's gonna happen, right? Um, and then, the, with the layoffs and stuff like that, it, it was like the ultimate wake-up call, right? It was like, oh shit, this really isn't actually gonna, you know, it isn't going anywhere. Right? This is this is yeah. as far as it goes. Right? Like this this is it. Right? You know, and that, that's we, that's that finality you were talking about. Right? Yeah. We, we, yeah, we exactly. yeah. Yeah. We've been, we've been fighting, fighting for yeah. progress. We've been fighting for a lot of things all throughout. Like our time in the game, like th thousands of hours mm. of just being in the game, and like thousands of hours being on stream or mm. making mm. videos or like debating the topics that we were that we were so passionate about and and wanted to see for the game, and and all of a sudden it, it just kind of. It just kind of dawns on you that not only aren't these problems or these problems are likely not going to get fixed anytime soon if at all there's also a finality to it like there's the game is finite there's only there's only so much that the devs will do it's not that they can't do it it's just that they won't this is, yeah they won't they won't in a lot of ways and and that's that's fine for the majority of the player base mm, like yeah even when the Twitch scene dies and like entirely for uh, for GW two and YouTube dwindles to a to an almost halt, the game will live on because eighty percent of the game population do not really care about the yeah. the details of the game. Like it, it, it's it's insane to me to like think about the game as like in in pieces so to speak. Like think of it as a as a large construct of a of a lot of small pieces, and every single piece of this puzzle is constructed of bugs and mistakes and things that shouldn't necessarily be or could be changed for the better. Like every single instance, every dungeon, every raid, every boss, every class, every every skill, almost everything. There's something wrong with it that could be done better. And it's likely never going to happen. It'll just dwindle because 90, 80 to ninety percent of the population in the game do not really care about the details. They do not care about the, like the the big picture, so to speak. They care about, well, do they get their enjoyment from from what they pay for, so to speak? Do they get their living story? And that's fine. Like I'm not, I'm I'm not talking anyone down who 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 believes that that is that is the future of the game. Like more power to you, mate. That like, play the fucking shit out of this game. It's a great ass fucking game. Mm. I've spent thousands of hours. I still plan <laughs> plan on playing it, but I think in a lot of ways I just view the game in a slightly different light. I see the hill now. I see, yeah. I I, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, this is not going to be much of a debate, guys, because I I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> it, it, it's just um, I yeah I. It, yeah, I, it makes me kind of feel, um, you know, what's the point, really, to a certain extent? Like, it really has hampered my motivation, like, seeing the game in the side. Like, it, it, it's, and, but in, in a way, I, I, do, I do feel this, almost this level of resentment to, towards, to, towards Arena, and, and to be honest, towards gaming in general at this point, as a result, is it, it's made me, I, I think it has made me a bit bitter, actually, about this sort of thing, because I see, instead of making, uh, really pushing the, pushing the boundaries, right, and making an amazing product, uh, arena are choosing to play it safe and, and just and and not do anything right like in my mind they have you know the golden goose right but they don't they don't get any eggs man there's no eggs 
Uh, they just leave it. They don't do anything with what they have. It, it's almost like they don't really respect the game in the same way that we do, right? Uh, as the more veteran hardcore player, right? If, if that makes any sense, right? Um, it's um, it, it's, think, it's potential. The, yeah. it, it's potentially been wasted. Yeah, the, the vast majority of the player base like don't give a fuck about like the, the how good the game actually is, right? Oh, but, but also I think the vast majority of the the devs like don't play the game. Hmm. Like, I I I I don't I I have this this feeling that it's a very small minority of the of the devs that actually play the game and know that there are issues but it has to be widely known it has to be communicated across the board for any of this to actually get fixed and it, it, it just it can't in the same way that like yeah they i guess i guess it just can't um yeah yeah it's kind of sad it is but really it, sad it's it, ultra sad it, in the end or in the end, wow. Uh, that's in not in the, the end. end the right apocalypse. now, right now, it's kind of it's changed. Obviously, the future of GW two will change slightly. It's it's still just as predictable as it always has been, in a lot of ways, as as far as I see it. But the dev team, the GW two dev team, that is, has gotten approximately twenty five more devs on hand. Uh, the world versus world team has gone from one dev to like five. All because of the war claw, because apparently uh, more pl more players played uh, like the what's it called played the uh, world versus world the week of the war claw than any other game mode at the same time. Whoa! Um, it's it's crazy in that sense, right? When when you put it in perspective of like where should you put your efforts, and it's it turns out that like world versus world, the game mode that a lot of people have believed in for a long time actually has a lot of potential and a lot of people see that they just kind of needed to have their eyes open and then the, the devs the devs see that and they go oh right okay data data we can use this let's go so many players get in, uh, get to interact with this game mode let's push it a little bit more let's put some more devs now that we have some more devs on hand and i'm not saying this is the truth i'm just saying like I wouldn't be surprised if we see the alliance system be come out a little bit sooner than they may, might have uh, have expected but the reality is there's been like one one and a half dev on on the alliance system for for the entirety of it and we're like it's just the end game isn't getting pushed i don't know we can talk about that for for a long time the end game isn't getting pushed all across the board pvp raids fractals world versus world it's all just kind of there for them in a lot of ways it seems like but at least now they have more devs at hand um, for the time being, at least, until they move on mm. to uh, the old project, so to speak. Because um, I guarantee you, whatever whatever was there is not cancelled. It's indefinitely suspended, sure, but whatever was there, we'll see it someday. Like, GW3, if that was the, if that was the actual thing that was being developed, or whatever the fuck it was, we'll see it someday down the line. It's just a matter of time. Hmm. Well, I mean, on the world versus world thing, I'm gonna be real, dude. Like, uh, it, it, you might have got a lot of people into the mix temporarily, but those guys are gone, man. Oh yeah, yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're gone. I'm not, I'm not saying that the, the it's the players it, like, are gonna stay. It, when it comes to like the focus, right? Like, if, if a redneck gal out of that, okay, that statistically world versus world has potential, then. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, surely those guys need to go back to to, to stats class, man, because like that, it's the mount, right? It's like it, it, that scares me actually. Because if, if they if they exactly if they correctly analyze those stats, then they're just going to make more mounts, and that is like, oh fuck me, dude. Like, what what are you doing there? You know, it's like that's but, but pretty rip. It, it's the same. It's the same issue with the living story, right? It's false equivalency in in the terms of uh, of reading the data, right? You see a massive uh, influx of players, and you see, all right. So was it this whole thing or was it this one thing that was done right? And for some reason, it, it, it seems like Arena has a really hard time uh, distinguishing the details from the, the actual picture. Like, say, except, uh, for example, with World vs. World here, the massive influx was obviously, from a player standpoint, it's obviously because of the mount. Duh. Who, like, who wouldn't realize that? But as we've seen with, like, the living story, what engages most people with the living story? Like 90% of the, the community plays the the living story, right? It's not because of the hearts or the story being all this detailed or whatnot. It's not because we repeat it all over again uh, or, or all the time. It's because it's new and fresh, but they don't really realize what the actual 
reasoning is, so to speak, or at least it seems like it, it they don't really realize what the reasoning is for this thing to be so heavily populated all of a sudden. What do you think it is, out of interest? Which one? Uh, li living story, living story, open world. I what? think it's just a, like, it, it's a, it's a matter of starvation, like, player starvation. It, it's new, interesting, like, the vast majority of the player base will just jump in, obviously, because it's new and to try it. And then the stats okay. show that there's so much interest in it. Yeah. That hmm, it must be good, it must be, hmm. Let's let's further develop this without yeah. really real and, and a lot of players will spend a lot of time there getting the achievements, getting getting a skin or whatever. There's nothing else. But it's to not do. because we actually enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. It's not because we necessarily enjoy going for like two times sixteen sets of uh, uh, the fucking uh, dragon's blood weapons. No, it's actually fucking terrible to get it. The best way to get the new weapon set is by doing hearts, the worst content in the game. How the fuck has hearts survived? <laughs> in 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 this game like well being the reason, they got reintroduced the, even right i mean <laughs> the the only thing that i could the only uh reasoning i can see behind like logical reason that i can see for uh hearts still surviving is because the data shows that people are inter interacting with the hearts but the fact of the matter is no one enjoys doing hearts i it, Show me one person who enjoys doing hearts, who isn't just doing it because it's the de facto easiest way to get the, the new material uh, on the map because the rest of the content is so unrewarding. You can do yeah. one heart and get more of the new material um, than you can from doing a like 15 minute long meta and trying to succeed with 50 other players. The, I, the, I think this is a, a crazy to me. This is a really interesting point, and this thing that, that this thing that I really like to focus in on. Um, I, I think that Guild Wars Two has actually strayed away from creating content that is actually good and engaging, right? And switched over to just like pressing people's happy button, right? In, in a way, right? It's like you. The goal of the game is no longer about fun. Like, it actually, it, it, it's crazy to me, Draw, how many people come in the game and say, and do like, oh, why would I do this? It's not rewarding, right? Like, why would I do that? Like, because it's fun, right? But it seems that... Yeah, the, but most of the, the content isn't fun. Well, that, that's, right, that's, 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 thing. that's the point, though. Like, the game yeah. has transitioned away from content actually being fun and engaging, okay, and going over to just being about purely reward-driven. And I think that that is the ultimate cancer that annihilates a game in my opinion because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy right now if say if you're um say if you're a player from another another game right or you're looking to join guild wars 2 okay if you actually talked about like the end game right okay like you're going to be told that you get like three raid bosses a year okay uh and you'll burn through that very very quickly and then you'll have nothing to do and also like fractals are, are really annoying and you'd only ever do them for the rewards really and that the open worlds of is completely face wrong completely trivial if you're a player who's actually looking for engaging gameplay you're gonna get wrecked in guild wars 2 it's a very tough sell actually uh, from that perspective right like it's true that there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff to do for a new player but once you once you kind of burst the bubble of being a new player, that, that you know you're going to end up very very starved. And a lot of the content that gets added into the game in Living Story, it's not even really, it it's not fun. It's just there to to be played once through, and then it just gives you a reward, and then you leave, right? Like instead of the content being designed around actually being good. Okay, it's just be like, well, how can we put these rewards in the game so people will chase after them? It, it, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, you know what it is? You know how like a robot w w would do stuff, right? It, it's, it's like if an AI designed something, like if you told an AI, maximize player engagement, right? It's kind of what an yeah. AI would come up with, right? It, and um, do, do you think that this is actually how it works? And like, I really have this very robotic statistical analysis of of all the game modes, right? And that's why you end up something like this, because because yeah, it's it true. Like it, it's technically true it really that player engagement is very high, right? That's technically true. Almost everyone does Living Story, but that's only because people want the rewards, right? It's not because it's necessarily fun. Uh, and uh, changing from a, f a a where the goal is to create a fun game and moving over to Something that's just about rewards, like very reward-driven, uh, completely reward-centric, and straying away from that core, core preset of game design. I, I mean, that, that's kind of scary, right? Yeah, it's true. And and in a lot of ways, I, I think it's, I think it's borderline impossible at this point to change player uh, player perspective. Uh, perspective. I was just about the, to say uh, it on the game. Was just about to, to say to, it. 
on uh, on fun and not rewards. Yeah. Because you spent the better part of six years uh, yeah. conditioning people to, to yep. believe that rewards are the only thing that matters, right? Yeah. Like the entire the entire game is structured around most efficient uh, behavior. Rewards. Yeah. And yeah, exactly rewards. And the community fosters that, like we guides all that jazz how do you most effectively get gold to get whatever the fuck is completely unnecessary in a horizontal um progression system like i just it, i i don't see it i don't see it going going away from being reward centric because the the community is just we're conditioned to to think that mm. that is we're, we're conditioned to to strive for the rewards in this game as long as there's nothing no rewards like we see it time and time again every single map that that gets introduced that doesn't have rewards like say the metas right the the new metas in all of the new maps nobody gives a fuck beyond just like doing it for the achievement or doing it for the extra materials or whatnot otherwise they're just going to go back to like istan or silver waste silver waste can never be nerfed and so they'll they'll always have silver waste fucking core map <laughs> yeah I, I i and this is where i think that arena have really fucked themselves i think they've completely uh designed themselves into a corner when it comes to this sort of stuff they that they can't it will be incredibly difficult to get out of this box that they made for themselves right i i not, maybe impossible even actually and and that's why i think things like guild wars 3 is necessary right if you really want to fix this like, you, you need guild wars 3 at, at this point i think um it's not and I, it, it's not going to get better otherwise and I think that's kind of what they've been striving for, is is a new game, obviously. Like, Guild Wars 3. Who, who, like, obviously, who knows? But I think they've been striving for something else. Mobile, console, who whoever knows. Mm. But, I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's pretty fucking and, rude, and, dude. And then, and, yeah, and then we're going back to the argument of, it's just, it's just a lot of wasted potential in, in yeah. my eyes, I guess. Um in a lot of ways yeah it's sad it's actually really sad about how, how much the game could have been in a way and um it, it still is to a certain extent but you you never really see that capitalized on you don't see a redneck utilize what they created like at all like it's it, it, I, I know you know to quote, quote to quote deroya gaming like the living story is <laughs> is trash okay uh, <laughs> but but no it's 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 not it's not that it's necessarily trash, and I, I think that's not what you meant exactly. It's just that no. compared to the rest of the game, right? It, it's like the weakest part of the game's systems, is, is, if that makes any sense, right? It's like, and in it's the one that gets yeah. the most attention. Yeah, yeah. In, in terms of like the actual overall design, it's the most generic, right? The least original, right? Because let, let's be honest, like Living Story... It's like the it's the the biggest bullshit ever, right? Like it's not living at all. It's like it's episodic, right? And it's static, right? It's not the world is not changing because they just slap a new fucking map on, right? That doesn't change ever, right? It, it's it, it, they even say this, right? It's frozen in time, right? Is how they describe the maps. Like that's the opposite of living, right? <laughs> that that that, that, that it, the inner there is no innovation, living story. It's it, as generic as it gets, right? Okay, and that is the hill they choose to die on, right? Okay. Uh, it, it's just, I mean, what the fuck? Um, and in, in a way, this is just, this is what it, it's like to be the irrelevant minority though, right? Uh, like we, what right now, like we are being crushed by people who don't care about the same things that we care about, right? And Arena, in a way, is right here. They are right to say fuck you, because at the end of the day, why would they bother, right? What, what's the point? Like, they just want to make money, um... Uh, wait, I, what I would say is because I think they should care about making the best product they can make. Um, and I, I don't know. Maybe it is a bit too late now. I think they could make a comeback, but uh, I, I think they're really missing a, a massive trick here when it when it comes to like, the actual design of the game. Because I think a lot of places... I, I, to be honest, to us, Roy, I think look at the Bless Online release, right? Okay, Look how many people are watching it and playing it. I think people are hungry for, for a good MMO, right? Like a proper MMO that you can sink your teeth into. I think people really want it, right? Look how well all the dumbass Kickstarter MMOs like AOC do, right? Okay, people want this stuff. They want this stuff. Okay, and I think, I, I genuinely think that a Rednet could have been the company that, that could have given it to them. But maybe not anymore. Maybe not anymore, to be fair. That dream might be dead, okay? Personally, and uh, I, I guess I, I might as well just uh, say this aloud. Personally, I'm not looking for another MMO. I, like, I've had some time after this whole uh, 
uh, this whole thing with Guild Wars, like, kind of blowing up and whatnot, uh, the layoffs, I've, I've kind of had some time to think, like, do I actually, would I actually want to swap to another MMO? And I don't think I would. Like, I, I think I actually, I would need a break from MMOs in general for like a year at the least before I could pick up another MMO. Because I need to distance myself from what Guild Wars 2 is and can do before I move on to something else. Because otherwise, I'm just going to keep comparing. It's a great ass fucking game. I, I, and I, I yeah. Like anyone who says any anything else, like any anyone who says that Guild Wars Two is a shit game, they're lying to themselves. They're they're just a moron. Like it really, I, I truly yeah. believe that. No, no, we I can say it, we can say it in in like like in a fun way and whatnot. Um, but the reality of, of it is that it, it's a great fucking game. There's a lot of shit to do. The the content is great. It's not that we need that we necessarily need more it's just that we need it to be the best it can be or we want it to be the best it can be and it just yeah. isn't that's what's annoying and it falls like, to, so to, short of that as well really it really falls yeah, exactly. short um to, to address another thing that like dan in uh, in chat here says um that we're, we're just bored and uh, young people need new stuff and i like it, it's general genuinely not that to me like i i i wouldn't mind if there was fur farther in between the episodes or farther in between the the releases but if i knew that the the episodes and the releases that came out were up to the standard that they that i know they can be then yeah you wouldn't be seeing me complain like this the reason why i'm complaining is because wh okay wh what are we looking at in a week uh let's say in a week or two weeks it depends it's either the 26th or the, uh, the 2nd of april we're going to get SAB. I know exactly what's happening there. It's the same shit, different story. They're, they might reset some uh, achievements and you can do the dailies for the rest of the time. It's it's the same same thing. They haven't pushed the engine. They haven't done anything. Why? Well, um, in the future, that's going to be even harder because there's no engine designer or programmers left. There's no tool programmers left. The game is not going to get pushed. The game will not get pushed until they hire someone new or old, so to speak, to push it. And then what? A month after that, like uh, March, wait, no, May, sorry, thirtieth um, or something like that, we're gonna get the next Living Story. So like four months, almost uh, five months after the release. Oh my god! Um, of uh, this year, so to speak, the Thunderhead Peaks. We're gonna get the next Living Story and the raid, the finality to that. And then season five, where the fuck are we gonna go in season five? What's gonna happen with that? I'll tell you what's happening. It's the exact same thing as we've yeah. seen throughout the entire uh, the entirety of the living story. Nothing will really change as much as people think that. Oh yeah, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get uh, fucking uh, elite specializations out, and uh, we're gonna get some cool and amount. And no, we're gonna get the exact same thing: more metas, more more maps, more new areas. Like I mean. Are, it, it's come to the point where I'm like, are we gonna ever see Kanta? Yeah, probably. Will I enjoy it as much as I, I think I could? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. It's gonna be fun and cool to see. Yeah. But in what form is it gonna come? Will I care? I think that, that's... Uh, that, yeah, uh, without getting too depressing, that again is uh, is, is one yeah. of my one of my main issues. Is just that I just don't see it. It, it um, it, I just don't see it changing, right? Um, uh, and I think it, for me right now, if I may address just just that thought yeah, of yeah, change. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, like, go ahead. It, it's it's the whole it's the whole issue of me not seeing it in. I don't see any development in that sense. Like I don't see the game getting pushed. I don't see the the game mechanics getting getting well yeah pushed changed developed um really f become fleshed out and i think at this point it's just a question of me getting used to that reality like what i've been advocating for for a long time like the living story and all the things that come in like i genuinely uh, genuinely enjoy it cool like i'll play all the living story i play all the content it's fun it's great content but I have to change my mind about it because no longer am I really seeing the potential anymore. I'm not, I'm not 
I'm not seeing it. I, I, I feel like I need to just kind of put that out of my head to to still continue enjoying the game and still play the game because yeah, it's a great game. Go watch Jaws video if <laughs> I mean you see what I mean? It it Yeah. I just don't see it. And that's fine. I don't have yeah. to. Well, I, 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 I can't get used to it. I refuse. I can't, use to, I can't get used to it. I literally cannot. I will be... Yeah. It's, it's not possible. Right? Uh, I refuse to accept the reality where this is as far as Guild Wars 2 goes. Because honestly... Look, thanks for the, uh, the sub, by the way. Uh, Light Thing XX, by the way. That's the name that I did. Okay? Seriously. <laughs> if this is as far as Guild Wars 2 goes, this is a goddamn fucking travesty. Okay? Like, I, I honestly think that people are going to look back... At Guild Wars 2 and go like, what the fuck were they thinking, right? Like, this game is so good, so far ahead of its time. Like, the thing you talk about comparing, right? That is a very telling thing. I think I, I actually really want to probe the thing you were talking about comparing, okay? Why were you, why why would you say, why would DeRoya say something like that, guys, okay? Why would you say, I need to kind of almost like distance myself from Guild Wars 2 so I don't compare it to other games, right? The, the implication there, right, is that you don't want to be in a position to compare Guild Wars 2 to another MMO, right? Because the other MMO would look bad compared to Guild Wars 2, right? And that is... Such a telling statement, right? I, I, I think that even if an MMO comes out today, I, for example, I think that when if when the next triple MM, triple A MMO comes out, if it ever does, okay, there's a pretty good chance that it will be mechanically inferior to Guild Wars 2. Like it's it's not actually that unlikely in my opinion. Even with your fancy schmancy new engines, RTX enabled bullshit, right? It's probably actually gonna not it's probably gonna be not even better. Like it maybe not even better. Okay, then, um, then, then Guild Wars 2, mechanically speaking, right? Okay? Um, and the fact that they, that Arena do not capitalize, or don't even see this, they, or, or they don't feel the need to capitalize on this, like, it, it's, um, it, it's, to, to me, I look at Arena and I see a company that is settled to just make a mediocre product, basically, and like, what the, who would do that, right? I don't know, it, it makes me sad because it's the game that I have invested in. I've got 15k hours in the game, probably 13k on my main, probably at least 1.5k across my alts, right? Okay? And it's just... I, in a way, I do feel let down. I, I realize at the end of the day, Arena has no obligation to me. You know, I, I'm simply one person who purchased their, their products, right? Okay? That's happened, right? I, I realize they have no obligation, okay? But it's still, I feel that the damn, dude, I feel let down, right? I do feel let down. Um, and, and in a way, I do feel that they should do better. I, I, talented people, like the developers of Guild Wars 2, okay? In my opinion, they have a borderline responsibility to fucking use that talent, okay? And get the goddamn job done, right? And this could be the game, okay? This could be the MMO, but instead, it gets relegated to the kind of like, ah, you know... It's a casual game. They do like an hour of content every th every three months. So yeah, sure. It, it's you know, I mean, really, that's what you want to be remembered as. Like, damn, dude, feels fucking bad. Like that that is that is rip. Okay, that is goddamn rip. And and I, I wanted to make it very clear, guys. That is not me personally attacking Arena or like roasting Arena Net, going crazy, uh, or, or anything like that. That that is a. Pretty fair assessment, really. Like, again, not an hour of content. It's more. I reckon you can get three or four hours of content out of the new map. Then, then after that, you're just you're just AFKing it, right? But like, to to do that, like, and if you look about what Guild Wars Two could have been, it has the potential for amazing open world content, and they've done it. Here's the thing. Like, this is what Dero was saying earlier, guys. They can do it. We know they can do it, okay? They've done stuff like Triple Trouble. Like, uh, honestly, the battle with Scarlet on the marionette was actually quite mechanically complex. The the original marionette fight, okay? Honestly, even stuff like Silver Waste, Dragon Stand, Auric Basin, we know they can do it, right? But the fact that they just won't it is just... It's heartbreaking, it really is, is the only word for it, right? It really is. Yeah, to Quatlin, yeah, another great example, right? Okay? They can do it, but they just won't. And that is just the saddest shit ever, man. It really is. It's, oh, man. It's I couldn't agree more. Yeah. 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 Big ouchie is what it is. It's big ouchie, Dorora, okay? Yeah. To quaddle see well, it. Yeah, they kind of did that. But thing. the thing is, like, as I was saying as well, when 
if you're watching this, if you like, if you're watching this stream right now, if you are in that part of the community, it, it's likely that you you will be the you will be amongst the only people that feel this decline happen, so to speak. You you felt that the vast majority of the 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 player base are not feeling it. They won't quit. The game will live on. It's still is much more profitable than it should be uh, six and a half years after its uh, its release. Um, like statistically, mm. like I wouldn't, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised to find that they've been mm. working on uh, like the successor of the game yeah. for like years, ever since the game came out. I wouldn't be surprised because I, I just mm. don't think that they necessarily believed in this that this would hold up this long. Yeah, and and, and one thing I also want to touch on there that kind of is a, is a bit of a, of a side point here, right? Is that me and Dora are absolutely not bash, bashing casual players at all, right? That's, no, that's very important you, to know that. Really? Okay, that is, you know, if, if you're a player who is happy with Guild Wars 2, that is absolutely fine. Like, I, I am not here to take away your enjoyment from the game. If Guild Wars 2 is fun, for you and you, you're satisfied with the game. That's absolutely fantastic. And, and so I, I genuinely, I'm not. I know I'm always sarcastic. But I genuinely know that. It, I, I, when I see someone enjoying something, that is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, and do, do it. Just do it and enjoy the game as much as you can. Right? That's, that's what it's all about. Right? To at the end of the day, really. Um, but it's just, uh, I think ArenaNet could do both. Right. I think they could do they, they could do it all, in my opinion. Yeah, they they could be the game that appeals to everyone. Whereas right now they have chosen to appeal to an, an ultra casual demographic, right? Which is I think a, a, which is really really sad. Um, and and that's why you see the decline. I guess it's lucrative. I guess for them, it's Otherwise lucrative. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. It's it's lucrative, but I mean, surely, like at the end of the day, that the goal is to make a good game as well. And I think they've sacrificed the quality of the product, right? I, th I think we can, uh, I guess we can argue about the the integrity of whether or not it, it is to create a good game or whether it is to just make money at the end of the day. I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know in this situation. Like, I, it's it's genuinely, like, Guild Wars 2 leans towards the, the money-heavy side. Obviously, there's a lot of love from a lot of devs that, that, they're, that are putting their efforts in, but at the end of the day, it really, really seems like the game is... Uh, in in catering to the casuals, it, it speaks it speaks extremely loud to me that yeah they're they're really focusing on the bottom line and in most cases or in in the case of this game so to speak, mm. um, it's not necessarily about the quality. Sure, they have a great they have a great foundation to stand on, but they're not really utilizing that. Um, they're not really pushing that because I just I don't think that a lot of the devs really believe in the game and therefore don't really push it yeah yeah it's uh, true maybe uh, and and the, the I, I think this this comes back to it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy right um you know the the game has gone in 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 this casual direction away from a lot of end game repeatable content right that can that can appeal to a more more should we say traditional uh, mmo player right and because it doesn't appeal to people you don't have any of them in the game because there aren't any of them in the game um you you know you don't see any any development for it right and it, it, it's a yeah. bit of, it's a bit self-fulfilling right like no matter what's gonna it, no matter what right it's not you aren't going to see this sort of stuff developed for because there's no market for it, and there's no market for it because it's not developed for it in Guild Wars 2, right? You know that there's there's no one no one who plays it, uh, which is which is a real shame, a, a real shame. You know, it really is. It really is. And uh, I don't want to do much of a I don't want to do too much of a depression stream, really, guys. You know, I want to keep a to a certain extent pretty it, PMA. Um, I I, oh, I mean well, yeah, Robert, thanks for the, the five minutes. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, so go even ahead. even here sitting uh, sitting here and saying all these things um, about the game and me like confronting the reality of it and blah blah blah, I'm still going to play the game um, at least almost every day or at least every week, regardless of what really happens. I'm still interested in seeing where the game goes. I'm still interested to see how it goes. Like I'm not going to. I'm I'm personally not going to quit. I have no plans to to quit. I don't really see a point in that. But. I, I really am starting to feel the the reality of me, well, having finished the game. Yes. Like it's, it's done. In a lot of ways for me, it's it's done. Yeah. I've, I've got everything. All the things that, like, all the minuscule things that you can actually 
work towards um, long term in this game, despite the game being designed for a an ultra casual audience and thus not having real like if infin infinite rewards uh, structures or anything to really work for. Play the game for like 12 hours a day, no matter how far along you are. Yeah, the game doesn't have that. And I've hit that block. Like, I've gotten everything. It's done. I might as well just take it casual now. Like, for all intents and purposes, I might as well just say, Do you know what? I'm coming back in, th in, in a month when, when, the, uh, when the new episode comes out. The only thing, I guess in, in a lot of ways, one of the only reasons why I'm sticking about is because of the community. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. Um, this is this is yeah. something that we, we talk about all the time, right? Like the only re the I I also I, I will out and out say, guys, like pretty much the only reason that I I am still playing this game is is ultimately because I like hanging out with people on stream and I like playing with my friends in in this game, right? Um, and I also con ha conveniently happen to really like the mechanics as well. Um, and no, I I do want to to a certain extent echo that. Um, as soon as something else comes out, you know, I'm. I'm gonna play this game as it's intended. I think I'll actually be um, be happier to a certain extent, right? As soon as there is an alternative, another MMO um, that I can play, like I, I I am still looking for another MMO because I I really, I really like the genre. Just it's just, it's just the genre I really like. And when yeah. when that comes out, I, I I'm gonna play that. And I'll play Guild Wars two like for maybe a few hours a week, right? And then um, and then play it when there's a new release, right? And I that's, think it, that's how it's it, gonna go. It really goes to say that like. If, if you're trying to play this game hardcore in any game mode, World vs. World, PvE, or, or PvP, you are going to have a hard time. You're going to have a hard time because it, the game just isn't structured for you trying to go hardcore. It's not structured for people like me like trying to go hardcore and really, really push the limits. It just, it just isn't. And I, I guess we would be happier if we just didn't do that. I, yeah, I th I, I I'm afraid so. But... I'm afraid so. I, th I think we would. Uh, and in a way, I think Arena don't even want you to do that. I think they don't like... This is a bit tinfoil hatty, but I, I actually think they actively dislike that sort of thing. I, 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 in a way. Um, I think they don't like what that fosters, in a way. Like, they want their community to be very, very, you know, touchy-feely. Um, and not, not hardcore. I think they actively don't want hardcore players. Um, in a way, you know, they they because they they, yeah. they they have an image in mind for their game. It's it's a bit like um, it's like the YouTube rewind, right? Like what Arena thinks the game is versus what it actually is. If that makes any sense, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, YouTube really want to have it's this. Super oh, true. super PMA feels good, man. Right? Um, like some Fortnite bullshit. Community. Yeah, 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 yeah. But dude, it ain't that. You know, that's just not how it works. Sometimes your your game gets used in a slightly different way than you intended, and it is exactly like that in my opinion. Um, yeah, it goes, it goes pretty rip, uh, and, um, that, yeah, it's, it's sad, and it, I, I think, I think I probably will be happy, like, it, it's not that, again, it's not that the game is bad, um, not that the game is bad at all, not, there's nothing wrong with the game, um, quite it, the contrary, yeah. yeah, quite the contrary, right, quite the contrary, okay, um, yeah, and I will eventually play this game as it is intended, but the, the reason that me and Deroy are even complaining about this is is uh, fundamentally like to, to really break this down into you know to, to, to brass tacks right is we'd like the mechanics of the game and we don't want to do that okay we don't want to play it once every three months for like three hours and then fucking log off again we don't want to do that that's not what we're about we it's don't a sad reality yeah, for me yeah it, it, it's it, that's why we're upset because we are sad about that we want to I, I want to be able to do a 24 hour stream of Guild Wars 2 but right now I exactly. live Legitimately yeah, couldn't do it. Not sit there and think, yeah. what the fuck? Do, yeah. what the fuck was that shade? I legitimately couldn't do it right now. There, there is absolutely no fucking way I could play this game for twenty-four hours straight. Okay, that it's just, it, it's literally impossible. Seriously, right? Okay, but the, and that's an extreme example, of course. But you get what we, you get what we're saying here, right? You get what we're saying, right? We, we want to be able to go hard and get invested and really put some work in and go, you know, and, and get shit done in the game, right? And have stuff for us to go after and have some, it's a, a lot of stuff to engage and repeat and stuff like that. But that's just not the case, man. It's just not how it is. It's not how the game, the game consistently sees development in the most single player -y of its game modes, right? I mean, what the fuck? Uh, and even the development there, okay, is ultra 
ultra um, uh, simplistic and unworthy of the combat system, really, and the game's mechanics, right? Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Like, it, it, it boggles my mind to this day that it's the single-player aspect of this MMO that's really taking off. Like for arena net that is, mm. and in, in the player uh, in the broader player it's base, it's a I novel well. design, right? A single player yeah. MMO, dude. Fuck me. It's such a crazy, crazy idea to uh, me. But it's the reality that we're living in, like, unironically, that is, that is the that is Guild Wars Two. It's a single player MMO. Whenever there's a there's a living story patch that comes out, it is a single player experience. When is the last time you you partnered or you had to partner up with someone in the living story, not just for novelty because you wanted to like slack through the story or you wanted to just like not do do this story solo because it's kind of boring? Like, when is the last time you actually felt like you had to partner up with someone? Uh, pff, I don't know, season one maybe because we all sucked at the game back then. <laughs> like, yeah. But nowadays, it's like every yeah four months. I guarantee you, by the way, dude, it's not gonna be three, two to four, uh, two to three months. Yeah, four. Uh -huh. um, I think what we're uh, what we're seeing, what we're gonna be seeing very very soon is, well, five month, four to five months release uh, window. I, there's no way that they're they're gonna be able to keep up with that. The thing is, like, they haven't been able to keep up with the two to uh, to three months release. But the issue isn't so much that they haven't been able to keep up with that. It's that they just never communicated it afterwards. Like, at least to me, it's like, yeah, we, we're we're dedicating to releasing a living story two to three weeks between or months between each other, and then they do the four month, and now they're aiming for the five month, like this this release basically because of the delays and whatnot i know but i think we're looking for that they keep trying to make the episode bigger and bigger every single mm, time yeah. and to me to me that's just it it's unsustainable because the uh because apparently for for whatever reason they decided to also have the uh What's it called? The end game content link to that as well, like oh, great yeah. and fractal uh, releases. Th this is something I I really dislike. That this is the only, we could I could talk for a bloody hour on this, but like that mm -hmm. the, the the bundling together of this stuff is so bad. I, it. Uh, and think about it, like, let's go through this, right? I'm pretty sure this is obje like objectively worse than spreading stuff out, right? Okay? Because it, it means that, for a start, it takes longer for the consumer to get the content, right? Because basically, Wing 7... I, I think it will be fair to say that Wing 7 is almost certainly done, right? It's probably going some very... Oh, yeah, it's done. It, it's QA, it's really done. blah, 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 okay? But we probably have to wait extra months for it, okay, because they insist on fucking bundling it with a bloody living story, okay? So like, why? Why would you do that? Um, it, and the thing is, it makes the game appear more dead because you get less, more time between major updates. Like, it's worse for the company and the consumer. It, I did, oh, I don't even get it, dude. Uh, it, Especially it, if they can't hit the window. Especially if they can't hit the, the release window. Because then, I guarantee you, this, like, Wing 7 is done. It's probably been done for the better part of a month. And it's coming out in, like, another month. It's literally, have, it literally will have sat on the shelf for, like, two months. At the very, very least. And if we're in for that in the future, let's assume that another Fractal or Raid is actually coming out, right? Let's just assume for, for shits and giggles, right? Um, mm. that thing is going to be sitting on the shelf for months and months on end, I guarantee you, because, well, if the release window is four to, four to five or six months, like, it doesn't take that long for the, for the raid really, or the raid devs to actually put out a raid, well, mm. I guess, uh, or put together, I guess ma now it kind of does, because they kind of lost all their programmers, yeah. so. Uh. Is that? I, I just just quickly address one thing actually. Um, uh, Hide goose. So re with regards to like, is anything based on facts, we know that Wing Seven was actually a uh, Wing Six was finished for quite a long time and it didn't get shipped because they want to do that. That was confirmed on Reddit, I believe. Actually, that was confirmed. So it's a fair assumption to say that the same thing has happened with regards to Wing Seven. Um, and also, a bunch of people, a bunch of haters wanting free stuff. 
hating that they have to wait then hating on people who actually buy shit in the gym store. No, like we actually, I actually explicitly said we don't, I don't hate on people who buy stuff in the gym store at all. I did, I bought a fucking shit, I have put a lot of money into this game, right, okay? A lot of money. Probably more than I should, I'm not gonna lie, guys, okay? I'm wait, gonna be- up. did someone say that, yeah. that we were shitting on people who buy stuff in the gym yeah, store? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, since when? When was that uttered, mate? Yeah. Show me a clip. It's... Holy shit. I, none of us have anything against people that support this game. This game lives and breathes off of the people that actually uh, yeah. put money into it. Obviously, I am not going to be opposed to the people that actually fund the game for, I mean, all of us. Uh, he, was he, was, he, 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 he was talking to chat, to be fair. He was talking to chat, to be fair. But, right, and really, listen, I, I, don't, I don't know how... I, I actually don't know this. Like, do, you, um, do you actually spend much in, in the gem store, do I actually? I actually don't know. I mean, I've, over the course of a long time, yeah, I've, I've yeah. spent... My fair share. Let's be let's yeah. be real here. Because I know I've I, got I, a lot I, of gold I, conversion, but uh, yeah. I, I have, I'm not on the same same uh, spendage as you. But <laughs> I'm up there, definitely. I, I mean, thinking back, like buying all of the different uh, different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it accumulates over time. I've been in this game for six and a half years. Obviously, yeah. it's gonna yeah. accumulate. Yeah. Subscription would kill yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think subscription would also make less money. I, I think um. Uh, subscriptions, in my opinion, are are actually less lucrative than than the business model Guild Wars Two has. I I think um, certainly a subscription will be cheaper for me. I, I think it will be cheaper for a lot of people, and it offers a consumer less choice as well. I, I think um, in general, you'll make more money, uh, and it's better for the consumer with the Guild Wars Two model. I I, I actually think that e just suppose that the same that that people didn't go, whoa, dude, Guild Wars 2 sub fee, I'm getting the fuck out of here. That, that that might actually happen, but suppose that didn't happen, I actually still think they'd make less money if they just just based it off a of sub fee. Can, uh, can, we, can yeah. we talk about the sub fee for a second in in relation to uh, Twitch as well? Like yeah, the sure. one that we had a con with both of us, we had a conversation with Envy at one, at one point, like off stream or something. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember when it, when it was, but we were talking about the relation between like uh, less. Uh, or not less fucking me, BDO, <laughs> BDO, and uh, them having a sub fee, or other games having a sub fee, and Guild Wars 2 and the and the activity of the Twitch scene, and I I am of the firm belief that because we don't have the the sub fee, we've a uh, we've kind of gathered a very uh, I I wouldn't say cheap. That's not the word I'm I'm looking for here. But you know what I mean? It, it's it's a growing population of players that are adverse to spending a lot of money on anything so like twitch or subscriptions or like they're very what, what's it called they're the, the, well I, I i think this is not the exact phrase but i think uh well this is maybe not exactly what you're thinking but i think what you're trying to get is that people are spoiled by guild wars 2 right to a certain extent yeah in, in a lot of ways I, yeah, no, I think I think it's true, but I think I think that's across the entire board. I think like the quality of the the game, like the mechanics of the game, and the business model. People are so fucking spoiled by Guild Wars Two. It is unreal. Okay, it is unreal. Like, it, it 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 the game is 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 like is fair to the consumer to the point of, of like almost insanity actually like it, it's well i think if you if you think if you look at the business model of guild wars 2 then you look at the business model of basically any other game you'll go wait wait what the fuck is this dude okay um yeah. it, it, it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind right <laughs> anyways I, yeah i mean I, in a lot of ways i think i feel like i've i've set my my piece you've shot guess, your the, bolt we can uh yeah we can talk about a million other things, but yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah. I, I guess uh, that was, that's my view on this, the current situation and, and why I'm kind of wank yeah. at the moment. Yeah. That's the best way to say it, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, bonus tea time, because this is a bonus tea time, yeah. Basically yeah. that. Basically that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Premium sub. What the hell was I, well, you know, I, 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 look, uh, no, I, I think we're, we're actually, um, Memeing ourselves, right? Okay, we've uh, we've sidestepped the issue. I actually don't think um, people doom saying about Arena Net's financials. I think there's people who are probably not. I don't think it's really that true. No, I, I, mean, I think actually um, you're completely wrong. Like NC Soft yeah. has shut down other studios at the same time. Uh, yeah. Arena Net and all of the all of the shit that happened there is more of a it's a scatter shot kind of situation. It, they they took the loss for a lot of other uh, losses for NC Soft, but NC Soft is just trying to take back their profits so to speak they don't ncsoft doesn't care about the game and the future of the game or the company so to speak they care about their bottom line and 
if a bunch of other things aren't making making uh, them money, then mm. ArenaNet is going to suffer as well. It's just kind of a, it just kind of happened off on the side as well at the same time. Like, it, it, you wonder why um, NCSoft is going to be moving in with ArenaNet. It's because they shut down uh, the costs of all those those other studios uh, for NCSoft's um, management or whatever the fuck is actually moving in with ArenaNet. Someone's moving in with ArenaNet, which is really fucking weird. Um, but yeah, it, it, it all the layoffs and whatnot aren't necessarily because of the failings of ArenaNet. Quite the contrary, actually. The game is making more money mm. than it's expected. Yeah. Uh, and it has for a long time. Like, it, it, truly. I, I'm I'm not just bullshitting here, by the way, guys. I'm I'm just saying, like, it happened because of NCSoft, not because of ArenaNet. And we, we shouldn't conflate the two. Mm. ArenaNet was probably making something cool, but it was it was worth shutting down to make more money on Guild Wars mm. 2 because it's still profitable. Yeah. But yeah. The, the thing that's not that's not really in the in the fine print, so to speak, for, for NCSoft, uh, or in their, as far as they know, I guess, is that that announcement is going to impact and hurt, potentially, the uh, the live game. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it, it's really sad. I, I think that this problem with when you talk about publishers, I think, I think I think it actually stems from a symptom of modern game development. Actually, like you'll you'll you know as time goes on, right? Graphics are higher fidelity, right? Like everything needs more work, right? I, and I think a great example is I reckon the amount of effort it took to develop a game like Guild Wars One, okay, was probably significantly less than what it takes to develop Guild Wars Two, right? Like Guild Wars Two is a yeah. much more complicated game. Uh, it, uh, you know, I, I imagine like developing the graphics the animations, uh, the engine, it's all a lot harder, right, than to do Guild Wars 1, for example, right? And as a result of that, you know, these companies get big, right? ArenaNet gets big, and that's a lot of employees, very expensive. It's very expen Modern game development, especially for a AAA game like Guild Wars 2, is very expensive, right? Especially for an MMO, like an MMO, like bloody hell. Like, now we're getting crazy, right? It's a very, very expensive uh, undertaking, right? So, and... NCSoft, like, as a publisher, right, and again, I'm not really exposing NCSoft here, this is nothing new, right, like, they like money, right, they're, they're in it for money, so if they if they see that this is not a worthwhile investment, then yeah, they're going to fuck around, I'm actually, you know what, you know, I said I'm not going to expose NCSoft, I'm going to expose NCSoft, guys, there was this video game, okay, there's a game, it was called Dungeon Runners, dude, this is a fucking good game, it was like a Diablo clone almost, but it was an MMO, and it was, it was fucking pog, okay, it was a great game, and then NCSoft shut it down, why? Was it just... Yeah. Was there an explanation, I guess, because there usually isn't. Uh, I guess it just wasn't making money, dude. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Yeah. Nice. Gotta get that moolah, yo. Yeah. But well, that's the that's reality, the yeah. As you're saying, publishers are in it, not for the game. They, they don't buy into the game because they like it, or necessarily. Mm. They buy into the game and support the game because it's making money. And the moment it stops making money or they stop making money, they have to cut back on their losses. Um, and shit like that just happens. Yeah, and I, I think in the in the climate that we have now where everything's got to be, oh, so beautiful, right? Just And it's got to be per, it's got to be crisp, and it's got to be now, right? Okay, I think it's very difficult for a games company to... to the, everyone Everyone's on a knife edge, right? And I really... This is where I have so much sympathy for ArenaNet, really, and for any any game studio, right, that's got a publisher breathing down their goddamn neck, right? Um, especially a ruthless one, like, say, EA or NCSoft, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, that's when you've really got to feel for the games coming and the developers, right? Because you know that, you know, they, they're going to come knocking, those, you know, those overlords, right? They're going to come a-knocking, right, if, if, um, if things don't go completely the plan and it's so volatile now with how expensive how complicated game development is right it's not as easy as it used to be to a certain extent because of standards have changed the industry has changed it's a pretty pretty fucked situation i both think that the toxic elite players hate on a raw peach type of players who actually enjoy the game for whatever it is and play for fun they're even so way so fun uh, those people are idiots uh, and honestly yeah it actually really does disappoint me a lot of the uh, there there are uh, it's, again it's a very small minority realistically realistically it's very much a small minority um, but this is, in my opinion, this is inevitable given the small size of the community. Uh, when you have a very small community and everyone's fighting for scraps, you effectively turn on each other. And it is true that a lot of people that you do, a lot of, there, there are a good chunk of people in the elitist community who look down on the more casual player. But those people are idiots. Um, I fully agree. Fully yeah. agree. 
it's oh. the the cannibalization of the entire community for the in in the belief that your part of the 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 game that you like is going to get more attention yeah you, like talking other areas of the game down will never help in no putting it, it yours fucks up. It, no it fucks everyone it else over down, well especially it right down there with you. especially in guild wars 2 because if arena net see that a game mode is toxic i think that will actually make them not develop it like unironically okay uh i, I think they they if they Don't see tell toxic, the casual players yeah <laughs> yeah hey, seriously if you want to make arena not develop your game mode put toxicity in it they will say nope fuck you uh because they don't like that right so yeah don't do that guys toxic people are getting banned now well yeah to be fair as they should right uh no it's true but that is inevitable in in a small community right people eat each other whenever when everyone thinks it's a zero-sum game and do i think it's a zero-sum game maybe slightly i guess but to be honest i i don't think that <laughs> well i mean on paper yeah if if tomorrow arena said you know what all those 200 devs we've got on Living World, we're going to put them all on raids, boys. I mean, yeah, I guess that would make... Well, I mean, honestly, that might not even help that much. Because Great content. Let's too, go. Too, too, many, uh, too many cooks, right? We'll spoil the broth. But, you know, but to suppose that they like, oh, you know what? Boom! Raids! Let's go. Like, uh, yeah, of course, that would speed it up, right? But, like, look, I, I don't think that there's there's much to be gained from, like, saying, yeah, yeah, fuck casual game gaming like that living story you know like you got to stop doing that stop doing that do this i think they can do both right i think they, they can be a balance there can be a compromise to be found right instead of just ripping each other the shreds you got to work together as a team and i actually think that that's one of the main reasons why the world versus world community has been so ignored like there's no community that's as fragmented as that actually i'm not gonna lie dude like that, that is like quite the meme I like, all the communities in this game want something completely different and like hate each other as well and unfortunately especially the high end scene like the high end scene contains the most chromosomes right that the higher in skill level you go especially in a game like guild wars 2 you add more chromosomes as you go higher and that's actually a really big problem as well because the players that perhaps should be listened to which are the players who are the most invested tend to also have the most um well how can i put it like social interaction problems you know like that's that's kind of how it goes do you think if any could monetize raids directly, they would develop them more? Um, I'm legitimately not sure about that, actually. Wait, what, what was the question? What was the if question? they could monetize raids more, would it make it better? If, would they, oh, would yeah. they develop raids more? I think they would. I, I think because of the War Claw and now the Armistice Bastion, now basically effectively turning uh, um, World World into a, monetiz a monetizable uh, game mode, that game mode is going to get a little bit more attention. Mm. I think if we could do the same with raids, I think we would we would get more development. I genuinely believe that. So, so because and and the reason why I say that it, it, it it's it's the same as like I was saying earlier. I in a lot of ways it feels like this game is all about the money, right? Like 50-50. I don't know if the if if the the higher ups are in it for the the quality of the game or to make a lot of money. Like, mm. sometimes it feels like that. It really does. When you're catering to the vast majority of the player base to pump out living story, which is extremely monetizable. Right? I, and I, I'd argue that this is a this is a, another case of just false equivalency, to, so to speak. Like, I don't believe that, like, just catering to, to the cash rules in that sense will, will make it great in the long run. Like, you have to have repeatable end-game content or else those people don't stay, uh, stick around. Otherwise, we're... We're catering to a fleeting community, um, which is just insane to me. But yeah, I think yeah. if raids were monetizable, we would see much more content uh, come into the game. Uh, th yeah, that's that's a good point, I, and uh, it, I think that segues into like I think it was actually really struggles with player retention, right? I think the the player base. I mean, of course, this is in, in every MMO, right? But it, it very it's very spiky, right? Like, uh, um, and I, I think that's certainly true into like PvP and raids, right? Like it. 
it, it just drops, it just droops away, and it doesn't ever really recover, right? It's because like, there's not a lot of repeatable meat content, right, for a lot of players to do, especially the more veteran players. Um, I, I think, um, I think, uh, Neil, was it, was it Neil who said this? Like, someone said this in chat, makes a really good point here. Um, yeah, it was Neok. Uh, I, I think, in, in a way, you could monetize raids, but, like, if you have raids, you can, this kind of content, right, sticks people in the game, right? They stay in the game. Um, and if you can generate long-term engagement, then you can sell, you can sell people stuff just in the gem store, right? I think a lot of raids Raiders buy stuff in the gem store, you know, um, oh, yeah. and just you know they they they'll just you know oh that's kind of a cool, look at this fucking this is actually a pretty cool scepter to be fair guys so this, this is pretty cool um, this um, this uh, dragon scepter right I mean damn dude that's actually pretty good um, huh that's actually pretty good um, you know, yeah, 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 yeah I like that uh, anyway right you know the, your raider might go dude this is pretty cool I'm gonna buy that shit right um, and keeping people in the game I, I think is profitable right and, and this actually goes into like, the easy mode. Um, Accessibility argument. I I think that you, you can actually monetize raids simply by making them easier, actually, uh, and so everyone can do them. Probably, I want to see. I, I do you think they could get away with retconning them to calling them something other than raids? Okay. Um, yeah. They should. I think ra raids is a it's a scary word yeah. to a lot of people because of, because of the connotations that it, it's gained over the years. Like it already had a pretty toxic connotation already from like yeah. other games. Yeah. And then we just kind of fostered that same same mentality, I guess, uh, in a lot of ways, or some people did, I guess. Um, and it turned into well, what we see today. Hmm. Yeah. Community being well, scared of it. Challenge me. Yeah. No. No. I, you're completely right. I mean, I know it's. I know it sounds a bit silly, right? Uh, but it, but it's true, right? Like people, there there is this. Uh, there are connotations, a stigma around it, right? and it intimidates people. And you know, I, I don't blame people for that. That's you know, it, it, it is what it is, right? Uh, but yeah, I think removing that that barrier will be good. I think a, a lot a lot of the a lot of the barriers for raids, you know, are quite self-imposed, right? You know, it is um, it is something that a lot of people like lock themselves out of raids rather than the raids that you're locking them out. They're really not that. Trust me, they're really not that bloody hard, guys. Trust me. Um, you know, it's it's really not so difficult. But I, mean, I know they, they 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 didn't they used to do this sort of stuff. I did. Do they sell like um? Wings? Do they sell any wing six stuff in the gem store, or do they not? Uh, no. Why? No. Why, why no, do you... not? Nothing actually. As why do you I think remember. they stopped? Because there was Zera back piece, Sloth back piece. Did they? I think they stopped a long did they, time did ago. Did they stop at wing three? No, there's the white man. To, well, I guess. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Why do I you think the last one was the light, the the white mantle outfit? Okay. Why didn't they stopped? Like why didn't they stop there? It's a really good question, isn't it? Because I, I, I honestly, I, I couldn't tell, but I guess to a certain degree, it's like there are more interesting, more flashy things in the living world that you can that you can uh, draw inspiration from and put that into the into the gem store, and it sells better. And that's like the the Guild Wars 2 community is all about that flash. If it's not flashy, they don't give a shit. The white mantle stuff. Uh, or the white mantle outfit wasn't flashy. Like it probably didn't sell really well, um, and I guess it's it's like that with a lot of the things. Like they started out hard with the Soul River glider, and everyone bought that, so they kind of continued a little bit, even though everyone complained about it as well. Yeah, m but, maybe the complaints did influence this, but I I, I don't know. I mean, I I th I I I, I, I want to say that yeah, the complaints might have stopped them, but if 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 they should have told us right that. If well, suppose it is the case, right, that not monetizing it with something like Soul River Glider like ended the fucking game mode, right? Like, like fully fucking wreck raids because like raids have got fucked, right? Let's be honest here, boys. Okay, like raids got annihilated, like after Wing Three, really. Like it was ripped. Like you had to wait a long ass time. It was like nearly a year. It was. It went from them. Um, it went from like one, you know, three or four, you know, three raids in a year to one raid a year. Ouchy, right? Okay, that, you know, if I'd known that saying that, dude, it's kind of bullshit. That the best reward in raids is from the gem store, and yeah, you know, I, you know, yeah, you know, I probably wouldn't have done that, you know. Um, but th th this, but I, I mean, mean it, uh, th this is where yeah. it comes. This is where we talk about communication, right? Well, sorry, go ahead though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it, it's one of those like uh, situations where we, as the consumer, we don't see the reasoning behind it. Like we're never told because they never tell us anything. So we're, we're never told what the reasoning is for something something getting love or not getting love. But in, uh, in the end, in a game with no sub fee 
and where it's all about retention time and whoever spends money on or however many players spend money on their game mode they or their game they cannot cater to a a, a minority that doesn't want to buy in so to speak they, if they're if they're trying to monetize a a scene like a, a specific game mode like raids they can't just do that without obviously deciding to also suffer monetarily and if if the game is kind of made off of that, or it's it's led by the people that want the bottom line to be a, as a spicy as a, as they can, then yeah, obviously that's it's just not going to happen. Like logically, there's no reason why anyone wanting a company to succeed would try to, I mean, monetize a game mode that's not going to sell. Like it's it's basically like making a product that you know, like making a product from the very start. That you know is not going to sell. You're not going to develop it. It's there's no reason. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's one of the yeah. reasons why, personally, mm. I, I'd much rather see a sub fee because then we could see shit like this still be developed. Raids could like just have a percentage of that cut, but it it'll always be that. But it will, no, it will, it will be. Into, well, yeah, like, yeah. I kind of I, I kind of see the point though. Actually, I kind of see the point. Um, do, do you think to a certain extent it would it would always be like that anyway? Like, don't aren't raids just going to get a certain cut of? Do, oh yeah, do, the, of, 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 of the anyway? player base engagement. And you think because that's it, that's it, low when that everyone it's, it's when everyone pays this, when every uh, everyone pays the same thing. Um, it, it's just going to be like the the amount of money that the the game mode is going to get is going to be determined by um, what's it called retention time. Mm. Right, it's how many players play it, and how long do they play it? How invested are they, and how much does this game mode push our game as a whole? Right, it's going to be based off of other factors than are the people that are playing it also paying for for this game mode. Mm. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, I completely. If ninety percent of the community does not does not pay for or does not play raids and does not seem to be. Uh, What's it called? Oh my god, spending money on it, so to speak, either. But then again, you can't technically spend money on the raids right now, so... It's a bad argument. Mm. Never mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think... If we made raids just pay for... Basically, okay. What we have right now is uh, the World vs. Worlders got exactly what they wanted, right? They got exactly what they wanted in the Armistice Bastion. A, an easily manageable uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, arena, uh -huh. which is now monetizable, lads. Oh! If, you want it, if you want it, you buy it. Uh -huh. And I, I find that to be an actually fair, uh, a fair approach in a lot of ways. I know it, it sucks, all right? I know it sucks. Um, World vs. Worlders obviously want this thing. They want access to this arena. But I find it to be fair. I would like to see the same thing happen for raids. Unironically, because if we had that option, then we had the option to pay to vote with our wallet. Is this actually what we want? Do we want this game mode to to flourish and progress? And I think the Armistice Bastion is is a perfect example of ArenaNet basically putting it out there for for uh, the world versus Worlders to say, do we want this or not? Do we want to invest in this game mode or not? And I know it's a shitty way of doing it. I don't disagree. Like I know everyone in chat is is kind of like, all right, it's it's a shitty area. It's not really worth it. Blah blah blah. But this is the first time you actually get a chance to vote with your wallet in that sense. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's it's true. I uh, it's a shame it's not uh, it's not exactly what people wanted, right? It's not quite there. Um, it, it's uh, you know, it, it's not instance, right? Which is the main problem. But it it certainly is um. Almost like it, it feels like, like a tech demo of what can be done, right? It, 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 with with regards to the arms of Sebastian, right? It's like, you know, it's like, ah, you know, we could do this, right? But uh, no, 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 no. Is it? I, I, I do wonder though, right? If, if in a way, a developer like a World vs. World that was, you know what? I'm gonna be a bit of a cheeky chappy. I'm gonna sneak this in there, right? And to kind of show that people really want it and people will buy it, maybe even based on that, right? So maybe uh, potent for a potential future update, if that makes any sense, right? Um. Because, uh, because obviously, you know, uh, one of those um, easy, you know, the, the 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 lobbies, right? That's an easy sell. If, if you're gonna put, that's the thing that you pitch to Arena, and they're gonna say yes, right? Like, you know, yeah, like, oh hell yeah, dude, let's fucking go. Um, but 
I, I think that, that that arena is like okay. And it, that's, that means we, maybe we can get this stuff because you'll notice that like, stuff like the um, uh, the Edge of the Mist arena, right? That was f essentially like done by one dev, right? Just like on the side, almost, right? To a certain extent. Um, so, same with the, uh, what's yeah. it called? The Mistlock Sanctuary Paskey. Yeah. Same with likely the, the Armistice. There's not, not been any more than two devs on these, like, projects. Yeah. So, just a bit of a sneaky thing in there. It's like, now it's possible. And now that people are buying it, like, maybe you actually will see, uh, almost like some kind of, of GVG setup that might actually be marketable now in some way. Like, you actually might be able to get some cash out of it, I suppose. Could be interesting. And, then, and you know what? I, I, I kind of agree with you, right? I, I, yeah, it is fucking bullshit, but um, m maybe, you know, like selling stuff like this for money might actually work. Like, I don't doubt that, um, that a lot of GVG players would definitely buy it, right? They, of course they would fucking buy it. Like, they, they would definitely buy the, the ability to have to access a, a instance GVG arena. They definitely would. Um, would that be really unfortunate for them? Yeah, I'd have to spend money on the game when you like. But then again, it's not an official game mode, so it's it's a bit it's a bit tricky. I don't know. Yeah, it, the thing is, like, would they rather spend money or like you know you can always convert gems, right? Convert gold to gems, yeah. than, than not have it at the all. The argument yeah, of always course, stands right? that if you're a world versus world, or you have nothing else to spend your money on than I mean, food and armor, I guess. Then yeah, you can convert your gold into a thousand gems. It ain't that bad. Yeah. Maybe it's me. It's but. true, it's true. It's definitely true. I don't know. It, it, in, in a lot of ways, I just I just find it to be a... It's a pretty fair little thing that they put in. It's it's a VIP area. It's not going to completely upend everything, but it is something that a lot of players have been asking for. And, well, you get, the, you get a chance to decide. Did you want it? Did you want it or do you not? And Arena has given you that chance. Granted, yeah, sure. It's... It's kind of pay to win, like, in that sense, right? It's pay to win in the sense that you're not getting the content free like everyone else, but at least you have the chance, right? At it's, least it's it, there. It, it's better than it not existing. And, and, and this is something that, that, um, it's better than, uh, this is what the developers have actually told us a few times, right? That stuff like Zera's Mask wouldn't exist if not for the gem store, right? Uh, and... Uh, again, uh, stuff like uh, the sloth or back piece, the soul of God, it wouldn't exist if not for the gems, right? Because uh, it, uh, it, it, it's not it's not that the raid team spent time developing it. It's that basically they didn't have enough time to do it. And then they said, you know what? I'll tell you what, gem store team, can you sort us out here a little bit and hook us up, right? We want this in the game. Can you guys hook us up, right? And then, then they said, yeah, yeah, we can do that. We think we can sell that in the gem store. That seems like something we could do. And then they do it, right? So like, would you rather, it's like, would you, do you really hate the gem store that much that you would rather have no Zera's mask, right? At all, right? And it is true, guys. Like, like I'm not going to defend this, right? Is it, do I find it like absolutely, Absolutely insane that there are basically no gliders. Well, there are zero mounts available in the game. Mount skins available in the game, right? Like, yeah, that that is like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, there are like almost zero glider skins except for the, um, you know, you've got the World vs. World one, the uh, the fractal one, PvP one, right? Okay, like, the, the fact that there's no, none from raid bosses is is hilarious to me. I, I do really like that they have. Um, gone back on this a little bit because they added doom's throne right they added doom's throne to the game which is in a way like that's kind of a, in my opinion that's a mount tier reward i do like that they've added some novelties what well, that's exactly what they're called actually some novelties to the rewards within the game i think that's a really good step but like it, it, it's weird that they don't go go more in that direction i guess it's because it, again it's, it's a little bit trickier to develop right uh but it is what it is i suppose it is what it is i, I wonder I, I wonder if uh mountain skins are actually making making the amount of money that they feel is worth it, so to speak, or it, it might that be cut? Because I, it, mount skins in a way is is really weird because they've effectively Arena has effectively saturated their own market, which is like what the fuck, dude. Um, but they've done that like numerous times. They've just done it so quickly with mounts. Most people will not care about mount skins unless there's a new mount because there's already like sixty in the game. Right, all through the gem store. The people that want a skin, they've already bought it. They're done. It's mm. good. They've saturated it. Done. Yeah. And so I wonder how lucrative that is actually in the future, unless they put um, in a new amount. Now, and I think this also goes to something that, that, well, maybe this isn't the case. Again, I do not know Arena's internal workings, right? But 
a lot of the time, it seems very almost like short-sighted, right? Like when it comes to this stuff, that they, um, with regards to like mount development and the way they structure rewards in the game, the rewards are all effectively. I, I don't want to say the word worthless, but yeah, I'm gonna say worthless, right? Like basically, the best skins in the game uh, and all the mount skins, you can just swipe your fucking credit card, right? You know, you know what I mean? It's it's just there's. And and after a certain time, that gets old, right? And it's just worthless, right? There's there's if you're uh, you know if you if you get any mount skin in the game, right? You're not special, you know. It means you spent eight dollars on the bloody game, right? It's 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 nothing. It's meaningless. Um and it yeah, looks cool, but it's it, meaningless. Yeah, yeah, and that is ultimately, especially in an MMO, by the way. I don't. Yeah, I, I would I would say that yeah that you've made a very good point there. It's not sustainable, right? I think it will eventually. It won't go away completely, obviously, everyone's gonna, you know, people are gonna buy mount skins, but yeah, it will eventually fall off, unless, as you say, you bring in new mounts, right? And I think that's what they intend to do, which I think they are gonna keep implementing new mounts into the game, like, on a regular basis, until the next expansion, if there ever will be another expansion. But, and and, and then, we, then we get onto the subject of, like, how new are they going to be? Because look at the wall claw, like, okay, I'm not going to talk down the wall claw necessarily, um, but it's effectively... In the roster of all mounts, it's effectively useless, um, unless it was for the fact that it's the only mount that you can use in the game mode where it's intended to be used, right? That's why you use the wall claw. In PvE, it's too slow, it's got a lot of health, and it's got a, a great engage, but nobody uses that. Like, no, you're, you're using the wall claw in PvE for, uh, for RP purposes, nothing else. Which is cool, like, you do you, boo. I don't really... I don't mind, obviously, but how new is the new mount actually going to be? Is it going to be, um, I'm not calling the wall claw a cop out, but is it going to be a cop out? Because this is basically, this is effectively a lot of the same animations. Obviously it's a new skin, blah, 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 but it's a, it's a Griffin. It's a Griffin. That's what it is. And next time, are we going to see something more, I don't know, another kind of Raptor. I don't know. I don't know. So with with regards to the war claw, uh, I think it is okay where it is. Um, uh, oh yeah, it's fine. It, 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 in, my, in my opinion, it's the it's the optimal thing right now. It doesn't really affect fights, um, and it does reduce the downtime. Right. Okay. So that's okay. I'm not talking right? down in world versus world. It's great in world versus world. It's perfect for world versus world. In my opinion, uh, obviously there there's some some sticky issues with it and blah blah blah. But as it's intended, it's perfect for World vs. World. But the only reason why it's perfect for that is because it's well, it's exclusive. It's the only thing that we have, right? But comparable, like I, I don't, how, how far are we gonna go with the mounts? Is my argument here? Yeah, it, it's it's certainly yeah, it's, it's difficult to come up with different different ideas, right? I suppose is that what yeah, it, it, something's my, actually unique, my, right? Yeah, exactly. My point here being, like, are, how far are they going to go to monetize, the, to continue to monetize the mounts? Let's assume that the market for uh, mount one through six is completely saturated. They're slowly on the pro uh, process of uh, saturating the beetle as well uh, and the wall claw. Likely the beetle is already a saturated market and people have kind of decided where they want to stay with that or they've bought in or they haven't. The wall claw has one package so, uh, so far. It, 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 it's gonna come there eventually. The question is like, what, what what's the next step? When when mount skins don't sell for mount one through six or one through seven, how far are they going to go for mount eight for that to be monetizable? Just be just to make it monetizable. Are they actually going to push the mechanics of the game, or are they going to make another clone like the wall claw? Hmm, you that, see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting. They need, one. they need some. They need something to be monetizable. But if they saturate their market, they need something new. Well, so how hey, far are they willing to go? I think they'll. I think, they'll, I, I think the they'll thing, go fucking far, dude. I think underwater mount. Let's go, dude. I think that's the obvious one. That? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that? Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no tools or engines designer left, or programmers left. Uh, would it be hard to do that? I'm not even sure if it would be no, hard to do I that. I don't know who would make this. I genuinely don't. Hmm. <laughs> that's that's all I'm saying. That's my argument from earlier. I don't know who would make this at this point. That wouldn't just be a skin and adjust the numbers to an already established mechanic that we have, which is running or flying or... I don't know if they can make a new one.
a, a new a new mount that climbs climbs walls or or glides well, underwater. I don't know if they can do it um, justice. I, I think at that point that's where you do start talking about um uh about their plan to release expansion level content, right? When it with, with Living Story, right? I I I would actually expect a new mastery type actually. Certainly with Living Story season 5, right? Um yeah, so maybe that they'll that'll be monetizable. I think one thing that I am I am expecting, right? Okay, is real um, player housing, right? Like, dude, you know how much fucking how much of a killing they'll make of player housing in this game, dude? Holy shit! Okay, like they oh people would like that. Okay, they 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 would like that. Okay, that would be the ben easiest jumps money in here, ever. by the way, man. Yeah. Ben jumps in and says, "Just yeah. FYI, programmers who were largely involved." And mounts are still here. Oh, there you go. There you so, go. Hey, okay. So the underwater mount is back on the menu, boys. Um, not sure if you keep missing it. What do you think of a raid or a war track like in the gem store? Make it free for two weeks and sell it for gems. It's not a direct skin purchase. to give you something to work on on top of these raid rewards. Uh, one, I don't think we will buy that because um, people are ultra casual in this game. And two, people would scream pay to win. So not a good idea. You're better off just selling the skins directly, to be honest. I, I do like the idea of a raid reward track, though. Um, I think um, adding raid dailies, raid reward tracks, I think that would actually be excellent for the game, in my opinion. Um, yeah, sorry about that, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just really in on this conversation with, with my man here. So, you know, we've got a, you know, it's uh, memes, right? Uh, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not, not really uh, going crazy and responding to chat, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, you know, I appreciate you guys still you know, hanging in there, okay? Boom. Let's fucking go. Um, yeah, I, 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 I certainly wouldn't mind them, like, pushing the, uh, you know, Pushing the boundaries with with the mechanics, like it, it, as long as it doesn't like fuck up my shit, I'm not going to be that upset about it. If that makes any sense, right, Deroya? And and that's why the War Claw, although it was it was a bit of a shock when it got announced, and I was upset about it. I wasn't upset about it because I thought it would actually do anything. Like um, I I actually think that uh, even in its original state, it probably wasn't really that OP, honestly. Um, uh, it doesn't affect the gameplay. It's fine. It it was there for a very specific purpose. To help people into the game mode, reduce the downtime, easy peasy, uh, get back to the fights, get in the action, get all over the map, fine, right? Okay. Uh, so I, th I think the Warcraft is actually a really, really good thing, right? Like, I don't think it ha I don't think every mount has to compete in a way, right? I don't think it. I don't think it necessarily has to be better than um, uh, than no, no, any no, no. other mount it, in it, PvE. It doesn't, right? ha it doesn't have to be. It doesn't it, have to be better. Yeah, it just has to be yeah. unique, yeah. right? We, we can't compete. We can't well, I, th I think it is. I, I, I think it is. I, I think it does something very specific, right? It's unique in the sense that it's unique. It's exclusive to the World vs. World uh, game mode. Yeah. But it can't compete. Like, when you line it up against the uh, the rest of the roster, it, it doesn't compete. But it, it, it but the, fa the fact of the matter is, it doesn't have to compete. Because it's it's exclusive for the World vs. World game mode. Like, that's where its exclusivity lies. The, the, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the way that the War Claw was implemented or that it, it's bad or anything. It, it It's perfect for what it's intended to be. But how far are we going to go with the next one? That That's the only thing that I'm saying. Because, like, it, mm. it effectively is just competing with the other mounts on, on a feature that we already have. Th uh, twice over. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I do see what you mean. I do see what you mean, hundred uh, percent. And yeah, and, and certainly I would expect the new mount to have do something different. That's why I say underwater mount. I think underwater mount is very likely. I, I cause, cause, um, okay, Dora. This is something that I, I, I don't know. This is a really fun topic actually. You, you know the uh, underwater combat update? Did they just do that for the fuck of it? Like literally randomly for the fuck of it? Wait, which one? Sorry. The w when they revamped all the underwater skills. Like, why did they do that? They never did anything with that. Did they just like? just jerk off like and just do nothing i, I, I don't know i think why they did they they've, i it, it, it's a real good, good question like yeah. as far as i'm seeing it, it it's it's either of two scenarios right it's either they they were working on something for the future mm -hmm. and like underwater mm -hmm. combat might be become a factor mm -hmm. somewhere down the line mm -hmm. and they already recognized that yeah or they yeah. were toying around with that or the balance balance team had a bit of extra time because they didn't know what else they they needed to touch on huh. in, in that huh. in that huh. scene. Huh. Just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting it out. As yeah, an yeah, 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 no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, because I don't know what the in between is. The in between is there is no reason, yeah. Yeah. which is just so. I mean, what to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I gotta call out. I some don't know story. what else it would be. 
Yeah, I know. It was weird, right? I, I wasn't really expecting the next Living Story map to actually be underwater, right? I, no, after that patch, I was like, oh shit, dude, we're going to get an underwater map. G mega yeah. meme. <laughs> Omega meme. Like, dude, all right, I'm, I'm actually going to... I'm exposing Ben here and everyone on the balance team. I actually got ascended underwater gear set up, okay? Just for the next raid win, because I thought you motherfuckers might have made Lagos underwater in some way, okay? I Seriously. convinced my look, entire raid I, Look, so. I'm going to log on my Mesa right now and show you guys. This is real. This is 100% real, okay? Right? Uh, I was... I, I, I did it, right, because of that balance patch. I thought, oh my god, it's going to be an underwater raid. It's going to have an underwater ML onto it, right? I'm Look, I'm, I'm on my Mesa, guys. I'm going to show you guys right now, right? And then, and uh, then you stepped into yeah, the Largos and yeah. you're like, there's water, yeah. and then you're like, when is, when, wait, what, when, no, okay, okay, this was a waste. <laughs> With infusions, by the way, guys, okay, yeah. Anyway, you know, one, one thing I, I do want to uh, talk about, actually, is, uh, is uh, actually communication in, in a reading net, right, okay? Um, now, do, do you think that meaningful communication would actually change uh, improve the game improves the game's reputation improve the state of the game in the eyes of the players in the in a large portion of the, of, of the player base or do you think most people actually just don't give a fuck like that's actually the question i would posit to you uh i think most people don't really actually give a fuck i think the the outspoken and better and an invested com part of the community they give a well they give it a lot of of uh what's it called importance communication 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 because it's all about why am i here what, what am i looking for um whereas i think a, a large part of the community or if not just like the major part of the uh, the, the major part of the community or the majority part of the community is what i'm trying to say um i think they're just they're just going they're just coming back and going away for a little bit depending on the cycle um of the game and the releases and whatnot i think that's really that's really it but for someone like me like to actually to actually be invested long term i need i need some communication now i need to know like mm. inferences and like hints and like winks and all that jazz is not gonna cut it because like word of mouth the word of mouth advertisement is kind of dead at this point, right? Because the word of the word of mouth comes from the uh, the the people and the players that are invested in the game, and if they don't know what's happening, what what's there does it really say? Mm. Like I wouldn't know what to say to someone right now, like I except for like yeah, it's a it's a fucking good game. Get into it if you're if you like all of what we have. Don't get into it because of what we might get, because I don't know what we might get. Um, I think at this point, for me, it's it's crucial. A roadmap is crucial, absolutely. Um, I don't think we can really do it without it, to be honest. I certainly think that uh, the, the the veteran player base cannot do without it, right? Uh, if if yeah. if ArenaNet wants um. If, if, if ArenaNet wants to keep any level of veteran player base in the game, they need some kind of roadmap, right? They need to explain their plans, right? If they don't... The, the, the scary thing is, is that I'm just not even sure if they do, right? No, uh, I mean, um, obviously they don't know right, right now. They're working out their plans. They're working out whatever might happen. Obviously, they, they know just as little as we do. Or, I mean, you, you get the jest, right? But, um... Really, they're trying to, they're likely trying to figure out what the fuck is going to happen right now. Um, now this is something that, that, that we, had, we just talked about a little bit earlier on, and I'm, I'm not sure if I fully agree, actually. I, I'm not sure if the plans for Guild Wars 2 have actually changed that much. No, um, I, I don't actually believe that the plans have changed in any, in any direction, except for perhaps in the long term. So they've, um, uh, if anything, they've, they've got a bit more muscle on the project now. It's kind of what's happened here, right? Um, yeah. If anything, so I'm just not sure if um, 
not sure if I it, think the, the... the actual roadmap has changed as such. It's just... And, and to be honest, like, we don't know if they cancelled every project. Like, for all we know, Guild Wars 3 is still cooking. Like, you know, you know what will be... This is why I... This will really piss me off, actually, Drew, right? Because... 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 Uh, if we're going crazy right now, we're saying, oh, dude, like, what the fuck? We're so, we're so sad, you know, this is what it, you know, I, we feel let down, blah, 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 blah. Like, I am not joking, guys. ArenaNet could unironically just drop Guild Wars 3 tomorrow, and that would be so feels a net, man. Seriously, like, that would be, oh, I am bread <laughs> theme, dude, holy shit. Yes! Oh, I am bread theme, let's go. Yeah. But seriously, they could do that. Like, they what, could do yeah. that, yes. When ArenaNet release something, no one knows it's coming. Like, seriously, not the content creators. Fucking no one. They just randomly drop it out of thin air, right? And it feels really bad when ArenaNet do something good, okay? Uh, and they just drop it out of nowhere and go, yeah, guys, here you go. And it feels bad when I've just, like, bashed the game yesterday and then they do something really good, right? It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why didn't you just tell me? Right, it's, oh, Ah, it, it, the the not knowing creates uh -huh. this this you know this annoyance, right? It's just ugh. It's a thousand um, marginal little annoyances that build up to to this uh, to this point. Uh, it's basically that uh, because it, it's like uh, it's all the little mistakes that they make. It's all the uh, the non communication uh, like here and there on the like the slightest of topics uh, that just that just create this eh, iffiness. There's Big more something for this game. Yeah, see, so look, yeah, Ben is uh, is elite, is actually uh, that. You know what? You know what is sad? Okay, okay. I'm just I'm just gonna say it, Ben. Right? Like that is actually unironically like probably more communication than we'll get. Like uh, 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 actually, like Ben is actually probably gonna get fired for that. I'm gonna call it now. Like he's fucking oh done. My. Look, there is more stuff coming for the game. Like wow. Oh yeah, he's fired. That's it. That's a leak. Yeah. Poor yeah. man, he died for our sins. <laughs> Look at those. I, don't know. Well, I mean, we we already. I mean, not to, because it's a it's a good it's a good meme and all, but we already know that more stuff is coming for the game. It's just that we don't know to any degree. What? Yeah, I mean, of course, of course, of course. You know, I was I was being I was being hyperbolic, right, and a bit facetious, but you, you know what yeah. I mean, right? It's just um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, well, okay to 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 actually be a little bit more serious there. I, it makes me sad that like the actual best way to communicate with the developers is bloody Twitch chat. Okay, I mean, come on, man. I, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I really appreciate that. Like, honestly, big shout out to all the devs. Like, unfortunately, um. Paul, Paul is no longer with the company, but actually we, we got a lot of insight uh, talking to Paul, talking to Ben, and that, you know, that's something that I'm extremely grateful for. Don't get me wrong on any level there, guys, okay? This, the communication we get from, um, from these developers is very much appreciated, right? It really is, okay? It is fantastic. It's a very good thing. And in a way, I, I think we do feel lucky. I, I think, um, for example, um, Asman, I, wait, was it, was it Asman Gold who said this? It was a WoW streamer who said this, right? Oh, no, 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 it was actually Josh. Josh said this. Um, uh, that you don't really see Blizzard employees, right, in um, in any stream, right, for, for World of Warcraft, right? So, in a way, Epi. I think it's it's a very a very fine thing that we eat, we have anything in our Twitch chat, right? So, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not um, disregarding that or, or uh, minimizing that contribution we have from the developers who do uh, take the time to watch. It's not just, um, it's not uh, only, merely, you know, merely, it's not just Ben and Paul, right? Like, we have, um, uh, Ianum has been in the chat before. Uh, some of the Fractal guys actually played through Fractals with me when 100CM came out. I, uh, you know, the, it, you know, the, the developers are, are on point here, but I, I think, um, some more in-depth communication, right, uh, is, you know, is, is certainly, uh, would, would, would be very much appreciated from, from a veteran perspective, right? Um, like, it is the uncertainty, right, like, um, of, of what is going to happen that it is really alarming and really rustles people up, right? You know, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, comedy communication. And, and yeah, and as I said, guys, like, the develop, you know, I, I love it when we have devs in the chat. And, you know, I, I feel really happy that uh, the developers actually feel um, comfortable and, uh, you know, uh, you know, welcomed within our community. I think, you know, sometimes we, we're maybe a little bit salty, okay? And, you know, that, you know, the, oh, hang on a minute. That's first green mist. But, yeah, I, I, would, I would love some kind of roadmap. Um, I, I think at this point it is 
It's pretty. Well, that was going well, actually. I don't, yeah, it sucks that you missed that. Shit happens, I guess. Yeah. Shit happens. They missed Gamble Stream. Uh, I guess uh, I have to re enable the Gamble Stream. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. On, on the subject of, like, um, a roadmap, it's not like we don't know what's happening in the immediate future. To a certain degree, we kind of know what's happening for the next 20 months, right? Kind we just don't know really what's happening after, or what that's going to include, and what else is coming. I, I suppose I, I just like a more meta roadmap, right? I, I want to know what the developers, uh, no, ra what, rather, not, not, not the developers, what the company's goals are, right? What do they want? What, 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 I, what I want to know is, what direction Epi. does ArenaNet want Guild Wars 2 to go in, if that makes any sense, right? I want to know what they want. Uh, rather than, you know, the specifics, I want to know, okay, what kind of game do ArenaNet want to develop, right? What direction are we going? And more importantly, I, I, Guild Wars I, 3. I, I want to know if, if they are um, doing something like Guild Wars 3, right? Because honestly, um, if, if I knew that they were working on Guild Wars 3 or something like that, there's absolutely no way I'd even be having this conversation. Because fair enough, right? You're making a brand new game, a brand new product, then hell no, I'm not going to criticize you for being a little slow on your your current product, or like, you know, quote-unquote maintenance mode or whatever it is. Like, hell no, that would be ridiculous to, to criticize them for that, right? But the thing is, like, not knowing that, it, 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 it just... You know, I, I'm not going to make that assumption, right? In, in a way, I almost do. Like, maybe I'm completely delusional, but I am actually expecting something like that. I, I, in a way, I do expect Guild Wars 3 or something like that, a new IP. I am expecting it to a certain extent. Like, maybe I'm crazy, but I do. Um, uh, but, but you know, of course, like, if, I, if I knew a roadmap for, like, the, for, the, for the company, right? Uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Like, Arena is one of the very few companies who I will buy their game, no questions asked, right? And I, I realize that might make me a, a kind of a bad, a bad, per, you know, like a bad idiot, right? That like you, sh you, sh you shouldn't really do that. But Arena is a company that I will buy their game no matter what, right? Like even if, even if um, Guild Wars 2 goes to complete shit, I will 100% buy their next game no matter what, okay? Because I trust the company, right? I trust the name. Um, so... I, I wouldn't be complaining about this stuff if I if I knew more about what was going on. And I you know I respect that you know obviously they're a company. Uh, they you know they want privacy to a certain extent, and they you know they um, they they don't want to give everything away. But I would like an inkling like what is in the works, right? Like what is going on uh, in ArenaNet right now? Obviously not now. That would that would be you know insensitive and, and inappropriate, right? But I do want to see something. Like what can I expect? From ArenaNet, the company, right? And now I'm gonna get called an ArenaNet shill. I guarantee it, right? But I don't know. Like, what do you, what do you think about that, Droy? Would you, would you agree with it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. I, I agree on every Happy. point. There. Mm. Yeah. I really do. Mm. I just mm. kind of. I mean, I obviously like when this whole layoff thing happened. Um, it obviously, it obviously stuck for everyone involved. But as a community, in a lot of ways, we, we decided to kind of take it with the. With a grain of salt and like hold our hell, uh, our highs, uh, well, our heads high and uh, and go with the flow and support the the company and all that jazz. And and I feel like just over time, like the the the, the lack of information, it, it it keeps tearing at the community in a lot of ways. Like, and it's obvious, it's obvious that we're not going to get communication for a long, long time. But that's not really going to change the fact that. It's starting to dig at a lot of a lot of people, myself mm. included. Yeah, yeah. That 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 this communication isn't coming, and it's likely we'll never know. We'll never be informed in any capacity. Um, because what are the odds of Arena actually changing their communication policy? I'd say zero. I don't believe it's going to change. I think the 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 biggest like handout so, so to speak that we we got and will get was them acknowledging that the layoffs were happening and that there are other projects that got cancelled that's all we will ever know that's mm. the only communication even on like the topic of like what is in the future i think we're not like they're they're going to brush this i was about to say under the rug but in, in a public sense they're going to uh, Wow, the F, the F he keeps distracting me. They're, yeah. they're going to <laughs> brush it under the rug. Um, 
but for all obviously internally they'll 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 know and discuss and whatnot but yeah for us uh, we're just gonna be left in the dark i think i'm honestly not sure Un un until some way down the line like five years down they announce uh guild wars 3 and they're like hey do you know what this is what we've been working on for the la last seven years. Oh wait, um, what 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 is it going to be? The entire it, the ex yeah, sixteen years. <laughs> the entire uh, duration of Guild Wars 2's lifespan. Not on me. Yeah, maybe, maybe, honestly, maybe. Um, but I, I I don't know with with the with the shakeups. Maybe not. Maybe we will actually see some change in in the companies. Company's policy. I, I certainly don't think it's impossible. I certainly don't think it's impossible, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, uh, and maybe, maybe <laughs> someone can sell them. Uh, I, I genuinely think that ArenaNet could actually broaden their horizons. Right now, there are. I, I, it, it, in my opinion, the iron is so fucking hot for ArenaNet to strike right now that people want that MMO that they can go and play, right? And honestly, they could they could be that game very easily, in my opinion. Like, the miserable failure of Bre Bless, right? It had a, a, over 100k viewers on Twitch, dude. Okay, people want this, right? A lot of people are interested in, in a game like this. They want to see it. Um, and they could broaden their horizon that they could target more audiences than just the cat than, than just the casual um like borderline single player game uh, market they could go further with it if they want to even now the game systems i mean look look at fucking bless online dude okay i'm gonna fucking say it the game was not just dog shit because of the launch and that the game was bad right it wasn't good um it, it, it's not fucking good right and if you compare the mechanics of something like Classic WoW to Guild Wars 2, right, it is a fucking joke! Seriously! Like, how much better mechanically um, uh, uh, Guild Wars 2 is than Classic. It's actually funny how, how, how much better mechanically it is. Uh, and it's not even, it's barely even comparable, okay? Uh, they, they, if, if they were more open, if they did say, yeah, we want to go in this direction, like, mm, what do you guys think about this? Like, can we get this going? Yeah, they could easily compete. They could if they wanted to. They just choose not to. It's really sad. It's really depressing. Oh, my uh, God. Stuck. Yeah. If they announce Guild Wars 3 too soon, it would massively discourage any Guild Wars 2 related purchases and lead to a drop in income for Aina. Uh, yeah. That's true. They're, they're, they're not wrong, but I, I think I'm announcing it will be... It will be um, they don't even need to say it's Guild Wars 3. I would... If they just said something like, yeah, we're working on something else, expect it in, well, we're looking to release it in year, okay? That will be enough for me. Then I would say, okay, fair enough, right? I would still push for updates in Guild Wars 2. I think it's an amazing game, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not be saying something like, what are you doing? Right? I'm not going to say that, right? Okay? Because that would be ridiculous if, if I had that knowledge, right? Okay? Yeah. And honestly, I'm not. I think there are things they could do to mitigate that. Uh, I think by doing something like the Hall of Monuments system, they could get people playing Guild Wars Two. You might even get more people playing Guild Wars Two to a certain extent, right? Mm -hmm. If if you have this carryover between the games, like the Hall of Monuments system, uh, in, in my opinion, is actually like genius by Arena. It's a really good idea. Um, and if they ever did make Guild Wars Three, I would really hope they did something because the idea of this is absolutely fantastic, right? Okay, and like. Uh, uh, it is fantastic, right? Like, the uh, the idea that what you do in Guild Wars 2 doesn't become obsolete when Guild Wars 3 comes around uh, is a big deal, right? That's a big deal. I, I think it's a really good idea. I'm amazed more games don't do it, actually. Um, uh, yeah, because the obsolescence uh, of anything that you work for, like, 10k hours plus, like... Yeah, that's going to sting, right? That's going to sting. Yeah, that is going yeah. to fucking sting. It's one of the reasons why I, like... Uh, the idea of Guild Wars 3 being announced it's its really to me it's its more of like a blow to GW2 um, like or my engagement with GW2 because it it, it, it kind of confronts me with that obsolescence like anything I do here from here on out it, it probably won't matter in the next game that I'm going to uh, going to buy or play mm. um, I did the same with from GW1 to GW2 the moment that like they announced that they were working on GW2. I quit GW1. Like, from, like, one day to another, I was like, All right, do you know what? All right, see you in Guild Wars 2. And I came back then. But, like, I quit it for, like, many, many years. I just... I just...
didn't really see a point. Hmm. So I feel I I feel like in a for me probably if Guild Wars three was announced, I'd I'd be out. Fair I'd be, enough. I'd be, I'd, be I'd be streaming something else. Fair enough. Um, like it, it's a it's yeah. a great game. It's fun, and I I'm not trying to discourage anyone from playing it, but I played it this game for like almost fourteen thousand hours. I feel like I've had my share, and obviously I'll still jump. Oh, I would still jump in to see the living story or whatnot because it's free. Like I never actually experienced the uh, the later things to the Eye of the North thing, whatever. I never played that, like the latest stuff that was added to Guild Wars 1, because... Really? Ah. Wasn't there a, like a barrier to entry or something? Like you had to buy it? I was like, no, I'm good. I'm out. Here it's free anyways. I can just I can just go in. Uh, wait, do, do, yeah, wait, winds wait, of change. Wait, I never touched you it. Didn't have to, you didn't have to buy it, no. You didn't have to buy it. Oh, wait, I don't know. I was out of the game by a long shot, or by a uh, long time. It, do, that, Okay, I'm I'm not even gonna lie, dude. I, I'm this I'm a bit of a Guild Wars One fanboy, but dude, you were missing out. It was fucking great, oh, actually. Like it, in hindsight, yeah. I know. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot about it. I have never touched it. It was unironically the best content they have put in that game was the stuff they added last. Like I, I when when you play through Winds of Change and actually Warring Kryter, it's epic, man. It's great. It's really good. Uh, actually, um, and actually, you could really see they really knew about Guild Wars 2. Of course they did, right? They, they released it very, um, they released, um, they were, it was very close to release at that time, right? Um, but they had a lot of influence of Guild Wars 2. They, they actually foreshadow Mesmer, right, in Winds of Change. Like, they actually implemented, um, like, Mesmer into the last boss. Like, Guild Wars 2 Mesmer uh -huh. into the last boss of Winds of Change. It was really cool, right? It was really cool. And it was challenging, wow. too. Uh, the, she has clones and shatters the clones. I, I didn't play it. That oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's like summons clones and shatters them as well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cool. I really liked it. And yeah, the hard mode. You yeah, the hard mode really capitalized on the guilt, the build system. Right, you had. To uh, they were a bit off topic here, but yeah, you had to really think about your composition for each mission, right? You could not fuck around, right? Okay, you had to be quite the big brain if you wanted to do it. Like, it was hard. Like, Winds of Change hard mode, dude. Especially in, like, the... where it, 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 When you get to, like, 8-man stuff, it gets a bit easier because, like, you know, 8-man hero comps are really abusive. But in the lower stuff, yeah, man, it was actually pretty crazy. It was, uh, yeah, it was really good. Where is that? Where's this song? That song, I think. Okay. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I like. I really like Winds of Change. Hello, come back to the game after five years. Which server is the most popular? Popular doesn't really matter what server you play on, unless it's about World versus World. Yeah, no, I, I think an a, a Hall of Monuments system would, would arguably bring people back to Guild Wars 2, actually. Like, you can start preparing. Um, I would probably say making it more extensive, though. Like, I, I think with Hall of Monuments and Guild Wars 1, I think, um, uh, Droy, you've got a good point there, but what if they just made it more extensive? I mean, it, right? they if, went if they came out, the, the fact of the matter is, like, if, if they came out with Hall of Monuments, I'd already have it. Uh, what if you didn't, though? Well, I've effectively finished every part of the game. That is true. Except okay. except for having an AT uh, funny hat. Funny hat, you gotta get that funny That's hat. That's literally the only thing that I don't have in this game. Yeah. I, I would be done. If they announced it, I'd be, all right, cool, I'm set for Guild Wars 3. I'd still play Guild Wars. I'd still play Guild Which Wars 2, so though. Crazy, I'd be man. getting hyped, man. I'd be getting excited for Guild Wars 3 by playing Guild Wars 2. I'm like, Pog, Pog. But uh, yeah, no, I don't know. It, it would certainly make me more relaxed. It would make me... It would make me happy. I, I would be happy about the state of the game at this point. That, oh, that... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I would be I would be sad about it or anything. It's just like, I, I feel like that is that mm. is the end for me there. And also, here's another thing, actually. Like, suppose that Guild Wars 2 could be developed in parallel, right? Okay? Uh, with this. Like, suppose that you, you could say, say uh, uh, this again, arbitrary. Right, okay. Suppose you could have 25% of the developers working on Guild Wars 2, and then the remaining 75% working on Guild Wars 3, and then assuming Guild Wars 3 does well, right, you could hire more people and then, you know, expand the, you know, re-expand the company, because obviously, the, you know, there's obviously a bit of a situation, right, uh, but it, then re-expand the company, if, if it does really well, right, because I, I think a, a fresh MMO could actually do very, extremely profitable right now, uh, to be honest. Something like that could maybe work, because I, I, and then, that's where you could even, um, you, you could start to differentiate the games, right? Guild Wars 2 could stay as as how it is, right? And an appeal to a more relaxed gaming playstyle, right? Like, you're very chill. Stuff like that, right? 
okay? Um, and then Guild Wars 3, they could go for a relaunch. Focus on what they do best, right? World versus world, PvP, raids, hardcore open world. Yeah, building the worlds, building those stories, I right? They could go again and fucking hit it hard. I think that... They they are they, they have to be aware of what has gone wrong with Guild Wars 2. Like, what if they really kind of gather themselves but, but, okay, up and let, boom okay. went in? Let's say let's say they know what went wrong, and what they decide to cut out is World vs World and PvP because those things went wrong, and they focus on the single player experience. And Guild Wars 3 is a console game that's more like to Destiny than anything else. Oh. I think there will be no reason. That, that is it. That is an actual ah, reality. That no. I ah, but here's the thing. I actually think that because of Guild Wars 2, that's exactly what wouldn't happen. Because why would they ever do that, right? A more casual player because wouldn't. Guild Wars 2 showed exactly. Ah, no. That, that was. Here's the thing, though. They wouldn't want to get uprooted from Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 already is that. They don't want to develop the same game, do they? Like, a, a more casual player isn't going to want to start again, right? So there'd be no pull from Guild Wars 2 to Guild Wars 3 for the players there, right? So it would stand to reason that they would actually do something different with Guild Wars 3, as opposed to just, just doubling down. If they double down, right, they're going to actually upset people because they've already got Guild Wars 2. They don't. They aren't going to want to move. They, they, can, they can focus on the single-player experience and do... Basically, GW one over again, and not GW two. Like, have the uh, instance content, have the like group based focus. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm not talking it down. I'm just saying, I think if they were to go with something for the future, aiming for the next generation of gamers, they're not going to go for PC, not exclusively at least. And they're definitely not going to go for if they're going for a console game. They're not going to go for um, the World vs World experience. Maybe PVP isn't getting cut, obviously, but. Hmm, that, that's interesting. I, I, I think it depends, honestly, I really think it depends what way Arena Net would look at it. If they look at it from, from how Guild Wars 2 is doing, then yeah, you're right. But if they look at it in terms of what they're actually really good at, and I think what a lot of players want, a lot, I, I think it, it's undisputable that a lot of players want that realm versus realm game, that large scale fantasy combat MMO, right? And I think Guild Wars 2 not only has the perfect setting for it, actually, to be fair, um, but, but also the, to be honest, like, the, the best engine there is for it right now, amazingly. Uh, we, we, we mock Guild Wars 2's engine, but it does it better than anyone else. Uh, but if they were actually developing GW3, yeah. though, mate, it would be even no better. Way they, they know, there's no way they'd run on the same engine. Oh, of course. That's, that's what I mean. Hey, they could do it even better. Skill lag? Skill lag? Yeah, skill lag is an issue. Uh, and it, it is bad in mega fights, but only in huge fights, to be fair. It has to get big before you actually get the skill lag, right? It has to get fat. Right? Yeah. This guy not here about Battle Royale? And be Battle Royale is not a complex simulation as the MMO, though. Like, the MMO is a lot more complicated to simulate oh. than, than a Battle Royale. A Battle Royale is a lot easier to simulate. <laughs> and yeah, it's not perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect, guys. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not hard white knighting arena net or something like that. It's not perfect. But to be fair, it is, an en it is a modded Guild Wars 1 engine, right? It's not exactly the most modern thing in the world, is it? And actually, to, to, to kind of really underline that, right? If if I knew that, um, I I think this is true for a lot of players as well. Or may, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm one of the last few people who, who are like a bit, bit a bit of an Anet fanboy to a certain extent, right? Um, if if I knew that Guild Wars Three was coming, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't really be looking at other games. I just go, yeah, that's what I'm gonna play. I, I wouldn't bother to get. Oh shit, am I going in the lamp? I'm I mean, gonna... don't get me wrong. I'd be playing okay. Guild, Guild Wars Three as well. I'm gonna. Like, go I, the I wouldn't be looking away for to from the game or the company. I have full faith in the company producing something really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. The, the, but the, like. Yeah. The, yeah, I, I, just, I, I'm, I'm a bit mad, right? Because I don't, I'm in the position where I have to look at other games, but I just don't want it. I, I, it's like, no, 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 one Guild Wars 3, you know, like one Guild Wars 2.5, whatever it's going to be. It's just, yeah, yeah. I, it, I don't, I don't, I'm, well, there's not much of a choice at this point, but it, it's still, it's still shit, right? To, to be in the situation. I, I, the only reason I'm even considering and getting so like, yeah, dude, classic, wow, AOC, new world, blah, 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 blah. That only reason is because I, if I, I, in a way, I kind of feel that Guild Wars 2 is relegated to the history books at this point. That, that's, it feel, and it, and the thing is, guys, it's self-inflicted. I, I don't think it needs to be, to be that way. They've, they've just mean themselves. 
Uh, well, <laughs> do, do, you, do you have anything else you want to say, actually, just out of interest to write? Is, I think we've, we've kind of gone over like everything at I this think, point. Yeah, right? I think we've, we've, yeah, we've, we've, we've it. done it all at this point. Uh, I mean, when, yeah. Within the first hour, we, I, I, feel, I feel like we kind of touched the the core of it all. yeah 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 the, the, it was it then t it then turned into more of a meta discussion but it's it, it's it's one i really like having because at the end of the day i can talk about this game for hours right and and oh, I, yeah. and, and and to be frank i think that should say it all right and um hopefully i don't know may, maybe we can convince someone at arena net to, to maybe take us seriously maybe they can see the passion you know uh, that we have for the game and and how much we think it can succeed and how much belief we have that it can do really well and you know be the game uh, that, that we get to play, right? It's, uh, I wonder if I should say, should I stay? And maybe the Roy will too. But yeah, I actually just, I'm you know. I'm sticking around. I'm just chilling right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and to be fair, you, you know, um, seeing as we've kind of got to, to the end of like the, the um, I suppose, the the actual discussion in a way. Uh, you know, thanks for coming on, dude. I really appreciate that. It's actually really yeah, good to have a talk. It was a, um, it was a good fun talk. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I appreciate kind of, yeah, yeah. Getting, to, getting to speak my mind instead yeah. of just being being called a complete crazy person <laughs> uh, going crazy on everything heart yeah. roasting wait what do you mean yeah. I, I would never say anything like that come on uh, no never yeah. never <laughs> no I, i'm just gonna say that I, I i thought this was gonna be ultra spicy because i saw, did i saw those comments on tea time yeah i go in like you're saying like living story is trash going crazy at hard roasting i was like damn dude I thought I was gonna go psycho on the game. I was like, oh, I'm, this is gonna be good, right? This is gonna be content, right here, boys. Uh, but no, 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 no. You know, I think it was good, right? You know, it's, uh, and it's you know, it's, roasting is fun, but I think it's good to have a a pro productive conversation as well. And I, I think it was. I think it was a good conversation to have. Um, hope you guys on the stream enjoyed it too. Uh, some, it was, it was good, really good. Uh, so yeah, thanks for coming on once again. I really appreciate that.